Okay, hello, hello, hello. Welcome once again to Heresy Hammer. I believe we are on episode 41. That sounds about right to um, me. Which is uh, pretty crazy, but then yeah. I usually get the episode numbers wrong, so it could be completely different. Who knows? My name's Lee, and my PowerPoint's not working. There you go. My name's Lee, uh, at Death From The Shadows, and joining me today is the ever-beautiful Meadows Miniatures. Hello there. Hello, Hello Robert. Hello, how's it all going? Uh, well, like we were just discussing off air, uh, I have been dying from the plague. So, um, yeah, I've got my box of tissues, which no. uh, oh, you man, means I'm either man full hankies. of snot or I'm just going to be wanking all. Uh, <laughs> Excellent, yeah. Well, well, show. So exactly one or the right. other, you work out what you think it could be. Either um, one, I'm fine. I'm fine with either one. <laughs> uh, we do a little warning now, don't we? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, that's like, right, yeah. If you don't like adult content, then um, fuck off now, <laughs> uh, essentially. Uh, please don't put little complaints about how much we swear, because uh, we care about a lot of things, you know, and we try and make people happy, but there's some things we just don't give a fuck about, um, so grow and up. that's one of them, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, so on that note, what are we covering today? Well, we are covering... The white scars. Uh, I... It's gonna be another le- Oh, go on. Yeah, sorry, I was gonna say I'm just quite. I'm quite excited about this one. That like oh, yeah. I have. I I basically incepted you to white scars because I'm quite interested in doing white scars. And I just do whatever you tell me. So. <laughs> exactly right. <Yeah. laughs> um, so I was quite excited about this. And um, but I I mean, there's not that many Legion units to go through. And I say, oh, well, this will be a really quick one. And then sort of three hours later, we're yeah you know, about wrapping up. I feel like the White Scars is one of those lesions that most people who play White Scars are very passionate about yeah. their legion. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we'll probably get lots of abuse about all the shit we got wrong and what a bunch <laughs> of cunts we are. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to this. It's yeah. I'll be honest, White Scars is one of those lesions that I've just never really looked at. It's never... I played them... Six edition 40k, I think. Um, but in heresy, I have never even dabbled with white scars. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll talk about it probably when we get to it. But basically, the, the issue was that you had to have a big old checkbook, in yeah, order to run the army previously. And I don't have a big old checkbook, so exactly right, exactly. <laughs> um, but um, it, it was a it was a it was a rich man's game or a rich man's was. army, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we'll get into it. But before then, shout out to our sponsors, Battle Bling, uh, all things 3D printed. If you're into Adeptus Titanicus, Legions Imperialis, and they dabble in Age of Darkness, go check them out. Uh, doing some awesome stuff over there. And if you use the code Heresy Hammer, you get 10% off. Uh, Beowulf, uh, again, 3D printing. He's been doing some uh, bits. Uh, I mentioned him in my LI show about doing terrain and whatnot, so uh, go check him out. And also uh, Gator 3D for some exemplary uh, 3D printing. Go check Dan out uh, and shout out to them for supporting the show. Uh, and we're into it. Hashtag Heresy Hammer. Oh, I thought I'd, I thought I'd go for some tanks this time. Cool. Um I'm Naughty feeling boy. the Land Raider love. Uh, I, I need to paint some tanks, and I can't remember the last time I ever painted a tank. I can't I'm... remember the last time you painted a tank. Maybe for no. World Eaters or something? Uh, yeah, would have like been. A yeah, long yeah, time would have been my World Eaters, yeah. yeah. Uh, so on the left, we have a uh, God Engine cast and a very sexy-looking Imperial Fist. Yeah, very battered and uh, worn. I, don't, I, think I like it's it. has got kind yeah. of um, tuffs sprouting out I of know, the... Um, yeah. Uh, out of it so it's kind of needs a needs a needs a, a desperate wash i think well they one. created that game didn't they games workshop where you uh, wash where this is what it needs isn't it yeah okay it yeah that, perfect yes that exactly. shit I love game. That a lot. um but yeah i love it i love a bit of battered uh yellow always looks good and then on the right we got dread monkey fist uh with a very sexy um dark angels land yeah right? that looks awesome doesn't it love the heraldry yes. love the icons love the transfers Trivia. Uh, yeah, I like the. Uh, uh, I can't think what the word is. The blue on the brass. Um, oh, the, 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 like, like the pat- patina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, great job, guys. Nice. Giving me some good inspiration. 
Um, and then we have Ben Lewis Grace painting with a yeah. very cool custody. Yeah, I've been seeing Ben. I think would be happy to admit that he takes time over each each model. Well, um, it shows. Yeah, yeah, this is very awesome. very neat. Yeah, I very would say. Um, very yeah yeah. It's just like per perfection, isn't it? You know, yeah, good lighting and everything. Yeah, it looks great. It's good. I think he uses AK rusty gold, which is a great gold as a, oh, as a base for his custodies, and then builds it up from there. But yeah, yeah. absolutely awesome job. It's fucking brilliant. Yeah, and on the right we have seize the initiative, and this is the new um, seat breaker model. Yeah, yeah, um, looks good, doesn't it? It looks great. Yeah, yeah. really good. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't actually, sold on this model, but um, yeah. Because one of our criticisms was like the soft armor, wasn't it? And actually, you, you just can't tell here. No, like soft no. I still feel like I would probably change the shoulder pads, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. just me being being a special princess. Um, <laughs> but yeah, great job. Absolutely yeah. awesome. Very brutal. I think. Oh, he's used a head swap, I think. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. I don't think that's the original head that it comes with. No. I'm not sure where that hits from. Is that one of the... They did the headset. Maybe the Death Guard, maybe the Death Guard uh, Legion specific head. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah, I think Possibly. so. Maybe, or we maybe. could just be talking bollocks. Um, <laughs> but yeah, great job. Uh, and then I had to throw some white scars in. I was yeah. just going to do loads of white scars, but I feel like all the white scars I would have shown, everyone's kind of already seen. Seen, seen them all. We yeah. yeah. This one's a good one, though, from Sardine <clears throat> Painting. Yeah, yeah, Sardine Painting. This is... I, fucking love this and this this is tends to be um a kind of theme that i've noticed through a few white scars uh painters of of um i don't want to use the term grim dark because uh -huh. that usually just means photographed in a dark room <laughs> with a candle next to it um but that kind of grim dark vibe you know yeah. they're yeah, I don't know what he's used in the shadows, but it looks almost so, turquoisey. Yeah, I think that's it. So I think that um so water bit I mean we've we've I mean Josh was the winner of our big giveaway, but uh, he um, was, he's, wasn't he? he's somebody slack. who's really popularized the um that kind of like green tint within yeah. the, the white of the white scars. But actually I think that if you even go as far back as Liam from Phoenix Painting, he was somebody who really popularized like blue turquoise group yeah kind of like tints within the white scars just to make them more exciting i'm definitely more of a purple man in the shadows for white scars just because it's oh, a little really? bit different but yeah yeah i like the um i don't know yeah i just like it um, yeah i think i think all of them look good they all yeah. read as white scars yeah. i think the um what i like about this one the most is probably the um jagged teeth on the uh on the chest though um, yes, yeah, I think yeah. that probably looks like the most interesting. Just doing that on everyone and making one every everyone. And the uh, ball, like, I think. the Mark Three looks really good. Yeah, really good. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome job. And then on the right, it's a bit of a whip, but it's another tank. Yeah, uh, Astartes console. I fucking love this blue. Yeah, and I love the little splash of red on the bolter. It's a bit old school. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. It does um, look old school, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I wonder yeah, if we'll I, do the last cannon casings in red as well. That might look a bit. Cool. Oh, that would look cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, there you go. You have to now. Uh, <laughs> console. <laughs> we have said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, more inspiration for whenever I get around to painting tanks. Um, but yeah, awesome. I think that is it. You've been uh, doing yes. tiny, tiny tanks, though, haven't you? You've been doing legions. I've been Imperialist painting tanks. a lot of tiny tanks. Yeah, yeah. but. Um, all the events I was going to go to for Legions Imperialis, work has completely fucked me over. Uh, and I now can't make any of them. So I've had to cancel all my events. Boo. So that's kind of killed uh, my motivation to paint tiny tanks for yeah, a while. Yeah, okay. Um, fair, enough, fair enough. But yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, hashtag Heresy Thursday. Uh, so this was released. I can't remember when this was about a month ago. A couple ago, of weeks ago. Yeah, a couple yeah, of weeks, weeks ago. Ago. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, um so Tybalt Mar. Um yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I can't remember who he is. So uh, he is a company captain with the uh Sons of Horus. He features in the first Horus Rising book. Um he is I guess they're like um you might remember them from the either and the or. They were the two uh, captains okay. who yes, were like yes, basically yes. twin brothers who weren't twins. One who dies often... straight away, doesn't he? Exactly, and exactly that. And, and 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 Tibble Mar is the one that survives. He right. is also quite um 
prominent in the books in the short lots of the short stories that are to do with the Shatter Legion. So he's basically okay. tasked by Horace to go and hunt down Shadrach Mendelssohn right. um, and go kick uh, the Shatter Legion's teeth in. Right. Um, and he makes a short appearance in Saturnine as well. So he's quite a cool character. Um, you know, not loads of words written. Well, I guess there's there's short stories written about him. He's not a, a character in the same way that like Abaddon is a character. Whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, he's had rules from book six, um, and he was pretty underwhelming. I think his um, okay. his warlord trait was like yeah, he gave like three units scout or something like that. Okay. His weapon wasn't that good, and then we got a legacies PDF, and again. He wasn't that amazing. Like there are probably other Sons of Horus characters you'd take before okay. him, you know, Varen or, or Abaddon. And then looking at his rules uh, in his newest iteration with a new model that are coming uh, with the Beta Garment book, he has got a real glow up in terms of, um, in term, in particularly his sword, but um, yeah, glow up in terms of his uh, in rules as well. So he's got a strength user AP two weapon melee flesh bane and murder strike six up and I think before his weapon it was still the culling blade but it was like AP dash and then like right. murder strike six up it was it was pretty underwhelming so yeah they've given they yeah given him a real glow up in fact he's got flesh bane despite the fact it's a strength user that's that's great right yeah yeah that's awesome yeah um and then just as an aside he also has quite a cool rule uh which is or wall or trait. So at the end of his controlling player's movement phase, Tibalt Mark can conduct a shock assault. When he does so, each enemy unit within 12 inches of Tibalt Mark must take a pinning yeah, test. That's fucking so you, good. Yeah, it's really good. I suppose you just want him uh, in the kind thick of, of it. it. Yeah, in a yeah. tank, right? Just with yeah, veterans okay. or yeah, Terminators yeah. just fucking getting in there. And then yeah. at the end of the moment, trying to pin people so they can't mm. get overwatched on a on a reaction, I guess. That's really what you want to do before you assault. Yeah. Um, I mean, his additional reaction is even in the assault phase as well. So you can, you really want to get him into the thick of it. As yeah. Says. yeah. Um, what are you thinking about this model? I I love it. I think it's brilliant. Yeah. Like, I think, um, I think that, you know what? I think it's great. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I haven't got a bad word to say about it. I mean, I think sometimes like little top. Um, Sons of Horus iconography on the backpack on the top looks a bit derpy sometimes. Right. Um, but actually, I generally think this is okay the sword, the sword is a bit like um it's yeah it's like a bit, uh, age um, of sigma i don't know i'm yeah, not sure what it is but yeah. it, but um it's a it's a it's a gnarly looking weapon and it is also easily replaced like you can easily replace that weapon if yeah. you want, want something else right so yeah. i don't hate the sword um but yeah i i get what you're saying um i i think the model's fucking brilliant cool. um and mark four as well was seen more yeah. and more of um different armor marks uh yeah. and this looks great you know we... the, the other the other thing i would say about this is it's a really good um so it's a really good demonstration i think of where they've managed to um combine old school like iconography from the great crusade yeah and then tie it in with like a more brutal sons of horus kind of style so the sword is a classic example of that the 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 top kind of like banner the eye but then you've got quite clearly imperial eagles on his on his foot and his chest yes, and i think yeah. that it's interesting that because there's a temptation i'm sure for traitor players to take off all the imperial eagles you know on javelins and spartans and things like that or not put those yeah. on. but i think that this is a good example of where those two can interact um quite nicely and shows the meshing of um those two stars within one model yeah yeah, I agree totally. Yeah, we always just think like, um, you know, at some point they come become chaos space marines, whereas mm. they they didn't hate the Imperium per se; they hated the Emperor. Yeah, um, yeah. and then the hatred came from there. Um, yeah, but plus it looks cool. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's um, pretty well. And yeah, most of these guys had fought for centuries in the Great Crusades. They're not mm -hmm. just going to give up on on. Stuff yeah. they've earned, I suppose. But yeah, I, I think the model's brilliant. Um, we have still yet to see a Mark IV helmet, though. I don't think. Uh, it, yeah, so I'd imagine um, it probably would come with a helm, but... Um, they yeah, seem to be it, it, yeah. keeping that one hidden yeah. um, for some reason, which will be interesting to see. Mm. Um, but yeah, cool model. Awesome. 
awesome stuff. And even more cool models. Uh, Shad- Shadrach Medusin. Um, yeah. So this is the guy he was hunting. The previous yeah. dude was hunting. Yeah, he he made a... Yeah, and he's in a number of short stories as well. Yes. Um, and he's also in a number of... Um, I think The Seventh Serpent, which is like an Alpha Legion and Shadrach Medusin slash uh, kind of book. But this is oh, like... Okay. It's the same skin, I think, which is the... This is the same foot forward kind of pose. So if you go back one to the previous uh, pose... Okay, and then we yeah. go to this one. It's kind of like similar. Yeah. Style, I yeah. Guess. Yeah, I suppose. Um, uh, people get a fucking real knickers in a twist over this. Yeah. But um, I guess it's the trouble the is. Mark, Mark three. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess the trouble is there's only so many poses you can come up with. Before. 100%. 100%. 100%. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I really like this model. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not so keen. I think that my only thing I would say is I'm not so keen on the shutting of the right eye. Um, it just, yeah. I think, even I, painted really, really well, it looks a bit weird. I think that um, you, as a man who's in the military, <laughs> yes, um, if you're holding a assault rifle that far away from you and not no, down you're, a scope you're not gonna see anything w- no. would you would you ever close an eye when you're no, shooting a gun like no. that no and and interestingly like um i mean obviously these are super future <laughs> soldiers <laughs> yeah but um yeah like in a situation like this you would no you wouldn't you'd keep both eyes open got it um, yeah so I, I mean that I was the first yeah. thing I thought of is like why yeah. would you shut your right eye? Yeah. And in fact, actually, when you shoot things like pistols, you generally get taught to keep both eyes open. Okay, interesting. So you can see what's going on all around yeah. you because obviously if you close one eye, you lose. Yeah, you lost the, you lost it on one side, professional on side. Yeah. So even from a real world, it doesn't make a whole heap of yeah. sense. What I don't um, know. It, so what the other thing is though, he might have lost the eye, right? I mean, he might just be the yeah. The, but know, then just, you need a big gnarly scar, scar, don't you? Yeah, yeah exactly. But, um, yeah. but no, um, I used to use uh, an aim point scope, which is like a holographic scope, and yeah, you keep both eyes open. Oh, interesting. Like, oh, literally, well, okay. you keep both eyes open. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when, when yeah. you were when you were, of course, a, a space marine. That's when I was a space, space marine, marine. Yeah. When I was Shadrach. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, he's he's quite a cool model, though, and I think that he, with a little bit of conversion, he could be used for Iron Warriors or um, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Iron hands. I uh, I think he'd make a great um, uh, Maritat with all the grenades. Oh yeah, 100%. Uh, around the waist. I think that's uh, a cool look. Yeah, um, Maritat would be a great shout for him. Actually. And I like the uh, I do like the um, the backpack with the uh, servo arm. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, a nice little because they're always just like sticking up, aren't they? So yeah. Uh, yeah. that's quite cool. It's all packed away, ready to. Yeah, yeah, it's actually an awesome model. This and then he's got we've got one of his rules that was shown, wasn't it? So again, this is a once per battle thing, which is the same as um mm. same as what's his face. So uh, start of any turn where Shadrach controlling player is the active player. This special rule may be activated for the duration of the turn on which this special rule is activated. All models in the same attachment as Shadrach Magician. Uh, with the Iron Hands or Shattered Legion special rule, gain Furious Charge 1 and Hatred Traitors special rule. So equally, just to, like, almost like, a, although this person is kind of like a conductor, I guess, and he's like, okay, everybody go charge now. And on that turn in which they charge, you know, Furious Charge and Hatred is going to be massively useful. So coordinating, yeah. uh, coordinating a, an assault with multiple units is going to make the most from this guy, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting one. Like you say, though, um, once per battle. I guess yeah. if you're playing four turns, yeah, it's not as bad. But is it yeah. as good as someone who's doing something every turn? Yeah, I um, yeah, I suppose it will be reflected in his points cost, won't it? That that will be the yeah. that will be the thing. And the other one is so Shadrach before had quite a lot of rules to do with the Shattered Legions, like he unlocked things in ways that other characters couldn't for Shatter Legion. So right, I, I wonder okay. if there'll be additional rules for him in that way. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We it's wait. a cool model. Yeah. It's it's and, and fuck me. I just, it's not Imperial Fist or Sons of Horus. I know. It's unreal, What's right? What's going on? I know. I'm real. Is this, must, is this the first Iron Hands <laughs> character it feels like we've, it feels like we've it. ever had? 
um, we've got we've got one in Cataphracty, but that's so old. Uh, it's about no, a thousand not, years not a name, old, no. not a named character either. No. So yeah, it's good to see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then we got some transfers. Hey, so we got and transfers some... for Solar Auxilia and and Black Shields are back. Yeah. So the ones on the left, they're new. They're, so they're was... brand new. Yeah. Brand okay. Because yeah. we did have. Um, we had a coloured so sheet that was amaze balls, but yeah, so, okay. Sadly. And then the one on the right, the um, uh, black shields. That's that's just a re-release of one we yeah, had previously, which is great because this yeah, shield, awesome. Was, this one was fantastic, actually. This yeah, was really, really good. I really like these for some sort of dark mechanicum type thing as well. Dark, dark make they're useful for dark angels. They're useful for some yeah, sort of forest. Yeah. They're useful for like lots of legions. These things are these are really really great for. Um, and it's just good to see like Forge World uh, transfers. I know they're expensive, but they are fucking brilliant. Worth it. Totally worth it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, cool. And then we've previewed this before, but um, this should hopefully be coming in the next few weeks. Yeah. So pre-order goes up on Saturday. I think everyone's oh, okay. going to get it. And oh, then okay. it'll be a two week, um, two weeks before we get it in, in hand. Hopefully we'll get then, some articles about it between yeah. them. Yeah. I am really interested to see how Shattered Legions will work. Yeah, I think it'll be complicated. Um, I think it, it will. Yeah, with lots of really long written rules that no one can decide <laughs> <laughs> what it means. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but, be long yeah. now because presumably um, once the pre-orders go up, then there'll be lots of videos about what's in the book, and um, we'll go up from people. Yeah, who yeah, from, from people who don't play. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, we're not bitter at all, but yeah, we're not bitter, we're cool, better. cool stuff. And then, last but not least, uh, we had the preview, which um, was last <laughs> night, was it? <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, so um, slightly underwhelming, but we which, we didn't get oh, we didn't get what? more than they told us we were only getting teaser rights. So and that's the thing, isn't it? There, there was a lot of people this morning going, "Well, that's fucking shit." And I get it, I do get it, but it does say like exciting teaser. I mean. <laughs> Maybe if they just put plus teasers and took out the exciting. <laughs> um, but if you yeah. didn't see it, essentially it was a short video of a red planet and then this uh, Mechanicum skull appeared briefly and then it went back to the red planet and then the cog appeared and it said some nonsense about uh, get your cogs ready or something. So... <laughs> Yeah, your co polish your cogs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Buff your cogs. Uh, so, I mean, read into it what you want. I would like to think that this means that plastic mechanicum is coming. It's gonna, it's, is, it's gonna be on the way, right? It's yeah. gotta be, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean, it, just to know that it is is uh, is pretty fucking cool. It's gonna follow, I'd imagine, the same release kind of schedule as the solar orgs, which is that it will come. There'll be a battle box. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll get that first. And then on the same week that that's delivered, we'll also get all the the following week. We'll get all the other stuff. So, so I, what do you think will be in the Mechanicum battle box? Uh, I think some Phalanx. Yes. Uh, a single Castlax. A single Castlax. Yeah, I think that looking what they've done with the Aethon. Right. So I think the Aethon is. Have you seen the price for the Aethon? How much is it? Yeah, going? 30, 35, 35 pounds. Like, That's yeah. outrageous. Yeah. But yeah. an Aethon is 90 points. Or, well, it's 70 points base. Okay. So I can see them saying, okay, well, a Castlax is kind of same points wise, yeah. same sort of amount of plastic. I can definitely see them being like, okay, well, just 35, point, 35 pounds for a Castlax. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so I think there'll be one of those in there. I think there'll be a Triaros yes. in there. Um, and the other. Some tank. of the. Um some of the what the were the items? no the just shitty infantry dudes yeah so um yeah i know what you mean the little tech throws yeah, yeah tech throws yeah. um, some tech throws but i think there'll also be one of the other tanks as well so i think uh like the venator tank okay like i mean plastic mechanicum tanks is fucking awesome um yeah. because the resin ones are basically way more than my 8 year old child um, so that I'm quite excited about. Uh, I'd be interested yeah. if they put an Arch Magos in, like a new model for an Arch yeah. plastic Arch Magos. That'd be really cool to see. I would absolutely love that. That would be amazing. Because there's got to be some sort of HQ model in it, surely. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A new plastic Ma Magos would be uh, absolutely That'd be cool. Brilliant. Yeah, um, I think, um, and I think like with a Solar, I think that you'll see lots of people go, oh, well, I'm just going to take Mechanicum now as, 
an allied yes yeah it's, it's, yeah i'm i'm quite excited for it to be honest because i've run mechanicum in the past and the mm. thing that puts me off running mechanicum ever again is just keep buying resin models yeah. that cost 20 million pounds yeah. um and a bit of a hassle to put together as well yeah although i do fear what a plastic mechanica model will look like uh, <laughs> God, <laughs> how me. many bits yeah like yeah. yeah you know a castellax with the the um Oh, what do they call it? The bolters they have yeah, with the, yeah. the belt belt feed. Is that going to be like individual links on a real, belt feed? Real like, hassle. Or, yeah, or... I think um I think judging by the solar, that I I wanted to tear my own eyes out when I was doing the Dracosun because yeah. it came in like two hundred pieces. I was like, yeah. Oh my god, please no more. <laughs> and same with the same with the Lima Russ. I was like, Oh god, please. It is it's it's funny, isn't it? It is that we moaned about fucking how expensive and heavy resin is and then yeah. we got plastic and then we moaned that it about comes it. in too many pieces yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, but i'd prefer to have plastic over the resin any day. well there you go yeah so yeah i am uh personally excited to see what comes i'm more yeah. excited for mechanicum than i am uh solar auxilia uh yeah. just because it's about a fifth of what the models you have to paint <laughs> yeah that's a fair point um so yeah cool cool I cool, think- cool cool that is it yes um so should we take a little break here yeah let's take a, a break um, and then we'll come back and um, talk about some white scars sounds great cool see you in a bit Hello, 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 and welcome back. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that little advert. And we're going to get into the meat of today's show, which is the Fifth Legion, the White Scars. Um, and I'll tell you how much I knew about the White Scars. I had to Google what Legion they were. <laughs> like what Legion number they were. Yeah, <laughs> That's <yeah>. funny. <laughs> um, yeah, so apologies. All the fucking White Scars players are now, oh, you dickhead. <laughs> Switch it off immediately. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any experience? You've never run White Scars, have you? I've never run White Scars, only in the form of um, Rewards of Treason units ah, okay. for Alpha Legion. Um, but um, I think, if I'm honest, they are probably my favorite Legion. But Interesting. I've just, I've just not done them. I think that their whole vibe, their whole lore... The yeah. whole wildness and the kind of unruly behavior, I just think is really cool. And I think the other thing is that um, Aaron Dembski Bowden does great books, really exciting books, but Chris Ray does quite elegant books, I think. And his book, okay. Scars and Path of Heaven, um, are two books that I could just re listen to, re listen to, re read, re read. Um, because I think he just did such a great job about painting the portrait of the Khan um, and the actual kind of legions themselves. They're quite an interesting legion. In the first book, Scars, they're kind of um, portrayed in a way which is that they're quite a divided legion in the sense that there is a Terran half. Yes. And then there is the the Chagoris half. Mm. Um, And I don't know to what extent White Scars players would really play that up. It's definitely a plot device within the the actual story itself, though. You know, the fact that you've got Terrans who would tend to side with Horus if it came down to a civil war. But it it is interesting, though, isn't it? Because their Legion beginnings, they basically would... Were they just basically part of the Sons of Horus for a while? Well, yeah, but they they were super close. But I think that they also played quite a pathfindery role. So I think they were quite independent of lots of the other legions and kind of forged their own way. But I think that um, the way that it's described in the books is that the Khan um, is, it has quite opposing views about the freedom of humanity to the emperor. So he has always aligned himself more to Horus and his way of thinking. I think he thinks of himself as closer to Horus than he does to, to the emperor. Um, and then the whole the first scars book is about essentially the rift and the divide and them coming to the decision that they will eventually support the emperor despite their close allegiances with with Horus and the sons of Horus. Oh, you know, where you know and there's some great parts in other books where Malkador's sort of saying man 
White Scars are never going to join the Loyalist cause. Those guys are absolutely wild and they're, they're <laughs> busy mates with the Sons of Forest. So, you know, they don't have faith um, that they will support. And I think that's one of the things I think that um, um, one of the things that the that's used as a device throughout the books and often the calm will say it just to put it in our faces is that they are an, a constantly underestimated legion by the other legions and that's partly because nobody knows how they fight because they're they're always on their own they've been on their own since the start of the great crusade um always on the fringes of right. the galaxy okay. know, waging their own campaigns that nobody knows too much kind of about them and i think that that is uh that's quite cool so they're not secretive they're just independent i think is the is 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 what yeah. i say yeah yeah, yeah. Way, dark no. angels or yeah or dark angels. yeah they're not they're not the alpha legion yeah uh, i think um uh i think that the white scars particularly with the saggy mazan so the saggy mazan are those guys who basically try to um commandeer the fleet um with their political and military machinations uh, away from the Khan, almost to force his hand to to side with Horus. Right. And then the Sagimazan are those people who kind of try to force the Khan's hand towards you know, treachery. Um, and the Khan basically kind of kills a lot of those or sends them off to go and yeah. fight and yeah, to yeah. fight until they die. They're, ba they're yeah. basically, you know, yeah, they're, yeah. they're like kamikaze suicide kind of squads. Yeah, okay. Um, and we've got a right of war. We'll have a look at it with the Saggy Mazan, but they're quite a cool uh, element. And I think that you could do a lot around the Shat Legions, I suspect, but also with just kind of like allies, you know, Iron Hands and White Scar Saggy Mazan or whatever. Yeah. Um, so there's some it's, really interesting, really interesting stuff. It's interesting, isn't it? Because obviously they're, they're kind of, um, they're basically space Mongols, aren't they? Yeah, they're, that's exactly that's, it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's their, their theme, yeah, which yeah. I was never a massive fan fan of mm -hmm. um until i saw um mike uh fell handed um and he took a more kind of japanese oriental yeah. vibe yeah. to him and i think that suits them really well i like the wild aspect but like if you look at the picture here the dude on the right you could imagine with just with the red face paint uh face plate um you know the old kind of yeah. samurai snarling faces it, it has that kind of yeah vibe to it which which i really like as opposed to the kind of mongol flavor but um, yeah yeah it's, it's just interesting. interesting it's just another way yeah. of, of looking at them really isn't it i think i think that fits. yeah i think that we've got a quite a <clears throat> i suppose a set notion of what mongols are but actually like if you look at the history yeah, of, how vast of, like the khan and and kublai Kai, yeah um you you would then go oh okay well these guys conquered china yeah they, mongolia yeah, yeah, yeah. you know yeah. right up and yeah. you know they conquered yeah. areas within the you know what would be modern day turkey etc yeah um so you know their, their empire was vast and that i assume that they kind of um lots assimilated of yeah, yeah lots of influences so i yeah. think that that's a perfectly legitimate thing to to do but it's basically an an, an asian style kind of yeah forces yeah yeah it's um yeah yeah I just it was something that I found interesting mm. and and if I was to do white scars I think that's the 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 flavor I would take I like that go. kind of uh almost like honor based yeah. you know like dedicated to being a warrior type thing but um the anyways, other the, the only other thing we haven't discussed which is probably the most um important one <clears throat> is that they are quite a cavalry based legion which obviously yes. links to the mongolians yeah. and, yeah, and yeah. horses as well um but they are not only cavalry based legion which i think is important because they've got lots of cool units and rules but um i think that most people if you're doing white scars that inevitably you're going to have jet bikes or outriders within yeah your forces at some, some point you're going to do um i would still love to see an assault squad based white scars army i yeah. can't remember ever seeing one yeah. um and I think that would be pretty fucking cool. But um, yeah, yeah, no, 100%. you're right. Yeah, people, it's, it, well, this is was what we talked about before, wasn't it? This was, you know, jet bikes previously being resin was so fucking, exp like ridiculously expensive. 100%. That to do an army of jet bikes would, you know, you could pay off your mortgage or have a White Scars <laughs> army. <laughs> yeah, like, it was, it was, <laughs> it, that was pretty much it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, with the, with the plastic 
jet bikes that certainly makes it a lot more doable yeah um I'm nowadays sure. but cool yeah so basically rob loves white scars and i know fuck all about them um <laughs> somewhere in the middle we'll get we'll get a yeah. show out there <laughs> somewhere yeah. good yeah. uh so the legion started white scars uh so their special rule is swift of action uh and basically all models with special rule add plus one to the movement characteristic and whenever called upon to make a roll to determine which player will take the first turn or seize the initiative, uh, you basically roll an additional dice and discard the lowest dice. Um, so uh, two things to say on that. First thing is that that re-rolling the dice or rolling two dice and choosing the highest absolutely fantastic that's really yeah. good like because yeah, yeah, yeah. i think that having yeah. first turn is 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 so important within this within this game and having first turn within the siege of Cthonia missions i think is so important um but it does then, say i just uh, it says may roll an additional dice and discard the lowest so you don't have, don't have to do to. it do you yeah. if you yeah. want to try and go second yeah 100 um, percent so yeah, sorry. yeah, and then well, there will be occasions where you might want to go second yeah. uh, if you're a drop pod army or something like that, right? So um, yeah. um, the other thing to say is with the plus one movement. So um, non white scars fans might be looking at that game. No, nah, well, that's not such a big deal. If you consider that most marines are seven can move seven inches, it then bumps them to eight inches because yeah. uh, it affects their movement characteristic. Uh, and then that means because they've got an eight inch move, they get plus one to their charge rolls as well. Nice. Uh, so it has knock on effects beyond the movement phase, um, which is, I think, really, really, uh, really important. And then, yeah, if you think about um, your jump packs, for example, you'll then, you know, it sets your movement characteristic to 12. You add one plus one on top of it, et cetera, et cetera. And that's going to, that, 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 yeah, that has will have a massive impact on various various things and so, uh sorry, sorry go on i was just going to say so you know it might look small but actually in reality in the game it will be big and i think this is a classic example of when we first started seeing the legion rules everyone was like oh what scores are shit yeah um and actually people started playing games it shows that actually it's pretty good is it top tier no not necessarily but um it's still pretty good. Yeah, uh, it's not. It's not obviously good. Is the thing yeah, I would say yeah, about well, it, but it can, it, it can be. Yeah, that's why people cry about it, isn't it? Because <laughs> yeah. it's not obvious. It's not slapping them around the yeah. face. Um, and then their advanced reaction. Now I had to read this about five times because um, the wording of it just fucking melted my brain. Um, but basically, uh, during the opposing player's movement phase, if an enemy a uh, unit ends within 12 inches of a white scars player's uh, unit. You can trigger this reaction and all friendly units, uh, all friendly white scars units well, within 12 inches of the enemy unit that triggered this reaction can make a normal move. Um, and you can choose to activate jump packs, uh, but you cannot run. Um, and you're obviously still affected by the penalties of difficult terrain, dangerous terrain. So basically, enemy move, enemy unit comes in to smash a load of your troops, and poof, they all fucking disappear. Basically, <laughs> yeah. And also, it <clears throat> affects uh, units that within a certain range, doesn't it? As well. So if you have a long string of your the unit that gets triggered and then it will affect all the other units uh, okay well. yeah so. so i think this is a really good reaction yeah i brilliant. think i think obviously if you're white scars you're um you're going to be utilizing speed so the ability to just disappear from you know a big unit that's coming to smash your teeth in is literally the most frustrating thing ever yeah, 100%. if you've got a sledgehammer you're about to hit something and then puff it just vanishes and you're left with no targets there um i think that's really good i just think again it's it's not an obviously good thing you have to be able to um think about where you're placing your units and what you're going to do with them um but yeah i like this i like it a lot Oh, um, sorry. So it's within twelve of that enemy's unit of the enemy unit. Positions. Yeah. So any sorry, any of your you... units that are within yeah. twelve inches of the enemy. Sorry, but then you think that's that's quite a chunk of tabletop, really. Yeah, that's that is actually sorry. So I, I'll correct myself there. So it's not within that 
unit get, that gets reacted it's within 12 oh, it's the enemy that, unit. This sort of yeah. final position yeah. but yeah that could be that could be an awful lot and actually yeah uh, the fact that it's not down to the initiative and is their normal move is is also really important i just wanted to say just one final thing on the ch- role the charge difference distances so um assault marines can move 12 um and they'll get plus two to their movement in ter- sorry they've got plus two to their charge rolls but because they then get bumped up to 13 they actually get plus three to their charge rolls as well oh, interesting. so it's interesting that um yeah how powerful that that can potentially become and that's uh, huge uh, isn't it yeah. yeah a 12 inch charge becomes a nine mm. roll yeah yeah it's not so you know i mean yeah. it's still a difficult but it's not you're not yeah. looking fishing for double sixes are you it's 100 percent. yeah 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 um cool uh so moving into the white scars warlord traits uh and again we've got loyalist uh neutral and traitor which i love uh do you want to go through the heroes never die yeah so uh this is i think um out of this one and born to the saddle i think that people will probably tend to take this one so uh your warlord all the models in any unit he joins gain the stubborn special rule that's absolutely brilliant remember if it's a um a command squad he's with they don't have stubborn i didn't realize they don't have stubborn oh, they do not have yeah. stubborn and the banner does not give them stubborn, stubborn either so actually having that is really useful uh so if the warlord gets removed as a casualty as well or friendly unit composed entire models with the white scar special rule uh if they're able to draw a line of sight to that warlord um when it's removed to class we gain the fearless special rule for the rain oh, so if he is taken off the board yeah it's killed and then all the units that can see him not yeah. just the unit he's with that everybody gains the fearless. fearless special as well uh in addition to that uh the opposing you get a additional reaction in the opposing players assault phase so it's difficult difficult i think this one because you'll see when your warlords stay alive you don't want to give up vps but yeah. also if you had a cheap <laughs> delegatus you know and you send him in he dies and then you, then you go okay well everything's you know, fearless. everything's now fearless that can yeah. see him um, I think you know you might use him as a bit of a sacrifice early on um, in in order to do that. Now the thing is that you need to think carefully about where you place your models. Um, yeah. Uh, in order for in order to gain that, because you know if your bikes, you're probably going to want to use cover uh, because you you know we'll come to the fact that you don't get a cover save with a jet bike later, but you um, you're, you're going to want to hide behind things, so that might mean that you might have not a line lot a line of sight um to the ball if he if he uh if he dies um yeah should i, should I yeah yeah, go for it. yeah 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 so uh born to the saddle is a less sexy one but i think it's good if you are taking a bike for your warlord and if you think about how brutal now the um dangerous train checks are so uh if so basically he's got to be white scars, obviously, uh, and he's also got to have the cavalry unit type. You ignore all the effects of difficult uh, terrain and gain a plus four up in bun save against all wounds inflicted by failed dangerous oh, train tests. Hell. They are called upon to make. Uh, so this, I think, is interesting because that, but you would just have, so your Praetor, though, would just have a four up invulnerable save. To be able to save that anyway, right? Because yeah. it comes with a uh, halo. Yeah, but it's the warlord and all models in oh. the same army. Oh, that's the bit that you missed there, mate. Oh my gosh, and all models <laughs> in the same army with the legion. Oh my god, right? Okay, yes. so not just the Jesus no, Christ. Okay, that's fucking... changed that. That's fucking changed that one, hasn't it? Bloody oh hell! Whoa. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, okay, yeah, 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 if this was the warlord, I'd be like, no, this is dog shit. But no, <laughs> everyone in yeah. the army. Okay, who, but uh, you, you're going to want to take a lot of jet, like bikes with this, right? This, but this is it. If you're taking jet bikes, this is the one for you, isn't it? Because, or, uh, well, yeah, it's cav- It's a shame it's cavalry unit yeah. only, because that would be awesome for, again, assault Assault squad. marines, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, if you have any inklings of taking jet bikes, then this is the one for you, really, isn't it? Because... Yeah. There's nothing more. I mean, they're expensive units. They're a lot more fragile nowadays than they were in first edition. Yeah, the last thing you want is to. Fail you don't want to be edition. removing models because they've tripped over a fucking rock that they're yeah. not even touching. So, yeah, 100%. and you can't even <laughs> spread those wounds around. Like once one's done it, you yeah, know, it's just, just gone. Say that one off, yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah. Uh, so that's actually forgive my forgive my poor reading skills, <laughs> my comprehension skills. They're so much better than I than I thought. Um, and then we've got a traitor only one. Yeah. Um, so uh, if an army whose warlord has this trait includes an allied detachment of the Sons of Horus, okay, special rule. So basically, your allied detachment needs to be Sons of Horus. Uh, the warlord and any unit he joins automatically pass any morale checks or pinning tests they are called upon to make without any dice being rolled, as long as at least one friendly unit with the legion is started that some sort of special rule can draw line of sight to the warlord or his unit. So basically you've got like them looking on, making sure the white scars are doing what they need to do, and they'll try to impress the impress the sons of Horus uh, yeah. within the uh, within the army. Um and in addition, the warlord and any unit is joined may make the death dealers reaction, advanced reaction, uh which is a dog shit reaction, by the way. So you probably don't want to do that uh, without expending a point of the controlling players' reaction allotment and counting all models in that unit that have the Legion of so White Scar special rules. They, they also have the Sons of Forest special rule. Blah, blah. Basically, they can make that reaction. Um, and cool. you don't get an additional reaction during a particular phase. You can just, just do that one. Um, so that's pretty like being able to. Pass all morale and pinning checks is actually bloody brilliant. Um, the only thing is that you are going to have to play traitor and you're going to have to have some Sons of Horus in your army looking on constantly at those white scars and having line of sight at those. White I am. Um, well. I like the fluff of it though. I like the fact that I think you know great. the white scars were were close with the Sons of Horus. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm not sure. I would be particularly choosing this one. Um, yeah. I think um I think it's uh I think it's all right. Um and if you want to do a trait of force I think it'd be quite good. I yeah. while you do the next part I am going to have a look at the Sons of Horus special uh, console because that one actually leads the um the allied detachment. So while you do the the rights of war I'm just going to go through um go through No that. worries. So we have uh, two rights of war um for the white scars. Uh, so the first one is the Chagorian Brotherhood. Uh, so the effects Legion Skyhunter Squadrons and Legion Outrider Squadrons may be selected as troops choices in a detachment using this right of war and such units gain the line unit subtype. Uh, Skyhunter Squadrons and Legion Outrider Squadrons may also be selected as elite choices in a detachment using this right of war, though these units do not gain the line subtype. Um and all models with the infantry unit type in a detachment using this right of war gain the outflank special rule. Uh, so obviously this is um, your right of war if you want to take jet bikes or biker dudes. Um, and yeah, fucking brilliant. They all gain line. Uh, I'm not sure I would be filling out elite choices with jet bikes or Legion Outriders. Uh, you've got enough choices, I think, personally within your troops choices but you can do it if you want but i do also love the idea of infantry units gaining outflank um i think you could get up to some really good shenanigans with that uh the limitations any unit made up entirely of models with the infantry unit type in a detachment using this right of war that does not begin play embarked on a model with the transport subtype or any model with the vehicle unit type without either the transport or fuzz Bar subtypes must begin play in reserve if the mission allows it. If the mission does not allow it, any units to be placed into reserves, then the unit is instead deployed as normal. Okay. I feel yeah, like if so you're taking... Sorry, yeah, go on. It's basically, if you're taking a tank, it needs to have, be a transport or it needs to be fast of some kind. Yeah. Otherwise, it's got to start off the board. That's essentially... But essentially I feel like if you're transport. running this, you are taking infantry and tanks purely to outflank them. Yeah, I think I'd 100% uh, agree with that. And I think that um, basically you're playing a fast, mobile, maneuvering force. Um, and yeah, if you want to do that, then you are that. Yeah, you, you outfight it. But the thing is that you can't take like a Sakaran, right? Because it's not a. Um, well, you might be able to because uh, it's maybe got the fast uh, subtype. Oh, but you're I'm not, not sure. I'll have, to, I'll have a gander in a second. But um, there are some. Like yeah. a, a laser destroyer, vindicate laser destroyers. Yeah, you're you, not you taking have that. that on the on the table, right? And you're yeah. probably unlikely to start this. Um, and then the final limitation: attachment using this right of war may not include any heavy support or fortification choices unless those choices are entirely composed of oh. models with the flyer subtype. There you go. So you couldn't even you couldn't even take 
Okay. Uh, yeah, take. Yeah. Take um, interesting. Uh, I like the idea of um, some outflanking um, uh, tactical support squads. Yep. Stick some melt guns in them or something, and you've got some really effective anti tank driving in from wherever you want. Uh, but yeah, I really like this one. This is obviously your uh, your jet bikes uh, uh, right of war. So yeah, you, if... you're gonna you're gonna pair this with born in the saddle. Aren't yeah. You? Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Um, and as a side note, Sakarans don't have fast anymore, so you wouldn't even be... so you, wouldn't well, you couldn't even take it anyway because it's a heavy sport. But as a side note, Sakarans don't have fast. Um, can I just go back to um, the traitor warlord trait? Can we just go Let's back? Do it. So the reason why I thought this was curious to me was because the Sons of Horus actually have the Dark Emissary. Now, we have spoken about the Dark Emissary pre previously, a long time ago. Um, but I was like, oh, I wonder if this is going to be the pairing that they want us to make. So the Dark Emissary is one that you take as the compulsory HQ in your allied detachment. So, uh, okay. yeah, yeah, like, yeah. so you would have the White Scars primary. And then yeah. you'd have a Sons of Horus force, force led by a Dark Emissary. It's only a 25-point kind of add-on. But what it does is it has a special Warmaster's Eye. Um, so it can only be ch chosen as an allied detachment that's part of a, a traitor force. Uh, but all models in the allied detachment with the Sons of Horus special rule gain the stubborn special rule. So basically all the Sons of Horus gain stubborn. And then he also has the Staff of Dark Authority. So any models, so any models with a traitor allegiance within six inches of the that character model uh, increase their leadership to 10 when taking morale checks or pinning tests as well. So what you've got is basically bubbles, areas, things are going to be able to quite high leadership and things are going to be able to pass morale and pinning checks automatically um, as well, which is actually pretty good. So you might yeah. want to think about stacking those things with uh, Sons of Forest. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Sorry, as you were. No, cool. Um, so the second right of war is the Sagamazan. Um, so this, the effects of this, i just got to move some boxes. Uh, Eben Keshig Cohort. Troops choices in a detachment using this right of war. No line, then. All units no composed line, entirely. No, yet yeah, no line. All units composed entirely of models with an infantry unit type in a detachment using this right of war must be given both the Karash and the Fill No Pain special rules. Holy crap. Now, the Karash, uh, I put the rules in here because yep. I wasn't going to skip to page 185. Uh, no enemy player may ever score any victory points for the destruction of a unit with this special rule, regardless of scenario played or any victory conditions in effect. In addition, a model with this special rule may not join any unit that is not composed entirely of models that also have the Karash special rule. Nor may a model that does not have the Karash special rule join a unit that includes any models with the special rule. Yeah. So, so yeah, this is insane. victory points, yeah. Yeah, this is insane, right? <laughs> because you're not having to spend money money points on apothecaries because you get feel no pain five up and your opponent if it's a, it's a if it's a kill point mission they're just completely fucked because all of your infantry um you know all of the infantry uh don't give up three piece now that doesn't though count for like jet bikes right because they're cavalry yeah you know so if you're taking jet bikes that wouldn't count for that it's just the infantry uh, infantry units. Yeah. So sorry. So this was the bullet point that has been updated oh, in the fact. Sorry. Yeah. So I probably shouldn't have read that one. So all units composed entirely of models with the infantry unit type, excluding units of the unique unit subtype. Okay. Yeah. In a detachment using this right of war must be given both the crash and the field of pain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So infantry units, but not unique. But are there many? So you can give, units? but you can give uh, the Khan. No, I mean, I suppose he's Primark. He's never, he wouldn't be infantry. No. So, um, interesting. Yeah, we'll come to the special characters in a bit, I guess. Yeah. See if you um, come up with a crash special. But yeah, that's all oh, units coming through. So you could take an entirely infantry you, army. Yes. And not give up a single V. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, they, because they got Phil No Pain, you wouldn't have to spend any points on yeah. the Pothcrows for those as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. You know, which is uh which is absolutely loco. Yeah. You, know, you you can see here, right? And I could I could definitely see this. A Saki Mazan force with Edwin Keshigs filling the compulsory troops. Yes. Uh and then white scars um inducti just filling out the other troops uh, interesting. slots to give to give line. Okay. See um, I like I like the idea of Eben Kashig and assault squads and yes. just shoving it all down your opponent's throat. Yeah. Yeah. Those would like that would be awesome. Like an awesome um, combination. But you so, would lose but you'd lose uh, I think the other thing is though that you, you might want to think about how you're going to transport those Eben Kashig. That's the that's the thing, right? So if you're yeah. not taking because you'll lose points on the transports. Not, yeah. not on the infantry. Yeah. Um, all models with both legions of status, white scars, and Karash special rules in a detachment using this right of war gain the fearless special rule yeah. for the duration of any assault phase in which they make a successful attack. Yeah, yeah that's pretty, pretty re fucking re good. Really good. Yeah. So you want to kill? Uh, you want to kill it on the first turn? You want to hit like a sledgehammer, yeah. don't yeah. you? Um, limitations an army in which any detachments are using this right of war may not choose to place any units into reserve and as such is unable to perform deep strike assault or subterranean assault or flanking assault okay uh, can you read that last one because I've got a big yeah, box sure. coming uh, so you may not include any heavy support um, that are not composed entirely of models with the infantry unit type uh, or any fortifications or primark choice as well so yeah that okay. I mean yes yeah, so you can't have the Khan because obviously the whole thing is the Saggy Mazana exiled from the Legion. Yeah. No fortifications. I think that probably makes sense. They're a fast moving force. Yeah. And no heavy support that um, aren't already infantry. So you could take heavy support squads, but you wouldn't be able to take um, you know, uh, a Sakari, right? Leviathan or something. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly that. But I don't yeah. think there's any bad thing because your heavy support squads uh, are going to have feel no pain and they're going to have the crash special rule. So you're not going to be able to PPs. I mean, this is yeah. a really savage. Um, right of war i think if you don't I want think... to use special characters and don't want to use the khan this is powerful. yeah i am um, i feel like if i was to do white scars this is the right of war i would be leaning towards yeah, i, I quite so. like the idea of um yeah. of the whole thing i like the fluff of it i like the rules yeah um yeah cool these are well, two I, these are two, two great brilliant. rights of war yeah, yeah i think yeah, yeah. there's not a there's not a dud uh within them and i think they're really fitting for the legion as well they're really Absolutely. they're good they're good rights of wars but they're yeah. fluffy as well they yeah. they fit the legion um cool so are we on um so armory of the white scars uh so we have the legion sh sh fuck me how Sham shamshir 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 jet bike <laughs> um any model with both legion as a starters white scars and an independent character special rules but not the unique subtype may exchange a legion shimitar Scimitar, scimitar, jet bike for a legion sh shamshir jet bike for an additional points cost. Uh, legion shamshir jet bike has one scatterbolt launcher in addition to model legion blah 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 that chooses to run against the shrouded five plus special rule until yep. the start of the controlling player's next turn. Yeah, so just to add to this, so you might be thinking, oh, that's interesting because you're probably going to want to move and charge or move and shoot. So this is, I think, one of the issues with jet bikes now, which is that they can't, because they're anti-grav, they can't gain a cover save. So what they've done is they've said, okay, well, if they run, we'll give them a shrouded five up save, um, you know, with that, right? Um, yeah, but what is a pain in the ass that they can't get a cover save? So you might be thinking, okay, well, if I'm taking Chigorian Brotherhood, and I I I can't foresee myself running, I definitely am going to need to put some apothecaries in with the these units. But I think that's a, it's not just for the Shamshir; it's for 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 everybody. And then the scatterbolt bolt launcher is an interesting one. So I'll just quickly just yeah, go yeah, ahead yeah. and then we'll come back to this one. So uh, it's a template weapon, so a flamer template basically. It's strength five, AP four, so. It essentially has the same stats as a heavy flamer. Uh, it's assault one, shred, and pinning as well. So you know if you've got uh, a number of these jet bikes, um, and you know th they could do a lot of damage before they they, they go in and charge, but they obviously have to be very close to their opponent to to make the most of it. Yeah. The, the only other thing I'd say is that the Shamshir can only be given to an independent character. So the it's not like you can just upgrade a normal jet bike. Uh, with normal like you know outriders 
or whatever they're called the, the you know the scimitar the, the yeah. the fast attack yeah this is for special characters but also we'll come to it in a little bit which is the um golden keshig also come with these jet bikes as well now we'll come uh, okay. to them in a second um but um yeah it's just worth noting that basically your independent character can be upgraded with one of these jet bikes basically i uh i don't hate it it's a free upgrade yeah. um yeah don't it's hate fine. it yeah yeah it's fine yeah, uh, Power Glaive. Any model of oh, both it's got some, oh, sorry, Lee. It's got some uh, other rules, though. Sorry, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, oh, that just talks about a uh, model of the infantry unit type that selects a Shamshir uh, jet bike as an upgrade, changes its unit to cavalry, anti grav, keeping any other unit subtypes it previously had. Yeah. Changes movement to character 6 to 15. So basically, yeah. So, it, yeah. Your, your independent. Be... Sorry, go on. I was just going to say that as cavalry, it can't be penned is also something you need to... Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not just models that already have a uh, jet bike. You can just give it to infantry characters. Um, cool. Sorry, as you were. Uh, Powergly. Uh, any model, both the character subtype and white scars special rule may have a power weapon upgraded to a power glaive for plus five points. Uh, so melee plus one strength, AP three, melee breaching five plus. Yeah, um, yeah, it's all right. I think um, I'd like to see. This is, I think, one of the problems with these weapons, which is that it'd be nice to see if you have access to a power weapon, um, then you can upgrade it because you're you're basically limited to um, sergeants taking. This. Yeah, yeah. Um, whereas it would be really cool to see like a squad of vets and a and a and a. Um, uh, a command squad being able yeah. to upgrade all, all of them with it with these yeah things. they're fucking expensive you've got to pay for the the power weapon and then the yeah. five points on top of that i yeah, mean they're yeah. not cheap to to buy um the sons of horus can have a better weapon than this um and they can put it on anybody with a with a with like a power sword or whatever um or a power weapon but yeah i think it's just a, it's a bit of an oversight i think that people would quite like to upgrade these things on command squads particularly yeah it's not it's not an over the top weapon, is it? No. Like you say, um, it's fifteen. And it would 15 look cool as fuck. Like a whole vet squad with these would look yeah. fucking brilliant. Um, 100%. Cool. And then the last one is Cyberhawk. Now this thing I used to fucking hate in first yeah. edition. So let's see if it's just as bullshit. Uh, any model legionnaires starters white scars and independent character special rules that does not also have the unique subtype may take a Cyberhawk for plus ten points. At the start of any turn in which controlling players are the active player, a model with a Cyberhawk may select one enemy unit with at least one model within 24 inches. When making shooting attacks against that unit, the model with a Cyberhawk and all models in any unit it has joined may reroll all failed to hit rolls of one. And when declaring a charge targeting the chosen enemy unit, the model with a Cyberhawk and any unit has joined may add plus one to their charge roll. Ah, oh, fucking hate these things. They're so, so good. Yeah. So basically, I think that the way I think if you're a white scars player, just take it because yeah. it's just so good. And also, it's not like it's just it's a Praetor upgrade. It's an independent character upgrade. So if you've got say like a Praetor in one squad, you take one, and then you have got a Chaplain in another squad, you take one, right? Yeah. And then I would liken these special rules to a whole Warlord trait in and of itself. You know, the yeah. fact that you're able yeah, to reroll yeah, yeah. ones to hit. And then you're able yeah. to add plus one charge. That's like a, that's like some people's wall, like some legion yeah. wall traits aren't even even that good. Um, yeah. And then you just get it for ten points. And then just plus one to the charge. You know, with everything that we've seen, jet bikes are going to be moving mostly fifteen um, inches, so they're going to get plus three to the charge anyway. Yeah, uh, and then another plus. So it's plus plus four to the charge. You know that that you know. So like I said, uh, with the uh, the right of war, um, Chagorian Brotherhood. And you have your outflanking melter gun support squad that come on, and then you activate this against whatever they're going to shoot, and then they're basically guaranteed to fucking destroy whatever yeah. tank they're shooting at. Um, I know when I used to play Liam in first edition, this thing used to drive me mad because he'd stick it on his plasma support squad. I mean, obviously, plasma was a lot more brutal in first edition, and they would just fucking tear through you because obviously you're just re-rolling yeah, no gets hot. No, yeah. no gets hot, you're, right? you're re-rolling your ones for gets hot so it it's yeah but the the plus one to charge when you're already adding 
to charges already is fucking yeah. insane, really, isn't it? Yeah, and um, and also there's no restriction around ZM. Like this would be really savage yeah. in ZM as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wants to charge and then rerolling ones. Like it's just yeah, yeah. You're just Ten gonna points, just take it. Just, just take, take it. it. Yeah. yeah, take them. Take three of them. Stick one on each independent <laughs> character. Fucking, they're so good. Really are. Um, I um yeah, because also the other one, like if you're taking a more attack, it would make sense that you would. I I mean. I would have to check the Moritat rules to make sure that you can't re-roll ones in some way, shape, or form. Oh. But if you can re-roll the ones on you any say, like get, get a bastard. Or to to you know to stop it from shooting, I'll, I'll yeah. double check in a second yeah, yeah. those rules to see if they are yeah. influenced in any way. But yeah. that's um that's a pretty savage combo, I think. Yep, yeah. really good, really good, cool. So the Legion console, uh, and we have a model for this one, don't we? Yeah, it's coming out. I think, um, um, yeah, I don't know if it's for sale yet. I can't and remember. And it's a but... really good model. Um, so Stormseer, plus 45 points. Uh, if you take a Centurion, Tartarus or Cataphracty Centurion, whose white scar can be upgraded to a Stormseer. And it gains the following benefits. A Stormseer gains the Psyker subtype and must select one of the following Psychic Disciplines. The Storm's Fury, Divination, Telepathy, fuck me, Thaumaturgy, the <laughs> fuck I can't read today. Uh, a Storm Seer may not select any other discipline. In addition, a Storm Seer gains the Adamantium Will 4 plus special rule. Uh, and War Gear Storm Seer may replace a power weapon, bolt pistol, or combi bolter with a force weapon at no additional points cost. Uh, and may select a psychic hood for plus, plus 15 points. Just to say, um, you can't reroll. But if you're doing a chain fire attack, you're not allowed uh, to reroll any of those hits. So they've got they've got around that those sneaky. Yeah, bastards. but it's good if you do have units that are, gets hot. Like yeah, yeah. just plasma. Plasma is a great example. Yeah. So, sorry. Uh, in so the uh, call of the uh, sorry, what am I looking at? Um, Storm's Fury, the uh, psychic discipline. Uh, a psychic of this discipline gains all the listed powers, weapons, special rules. The Unseen Bolt. Uh, so the Unseen Bolt is 72 inch range, strength 4, AP 4, heavy 1, large blast 5 inch, barrage, shock pulse, and force. Okay, yeah, so that's uh, quite good because you can double the okay. strength on that, right? Yeah. The strength will become strength 8, AP 4. So. Uh, yeah, it's a shame it's heavy, but. Uh, yeah, but if you're on a jet bike, you're relentless. Uh, but you wouldn't be able to use that new core cool model that's coming up. You'd have to <laughs> that cut it that is true. That is true. <laughs> uh, oh no, no, no! And... Sorry, hang on, hang on. Uh, all consoles are they come with relentless anyway? Oh, no, yeah, well, I'll shut just, up. Then. That's just just in their special rules. So. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, uh, yeah. AP yeah, four. Shot so, pulse is uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, and barrage as well. You know. It's like a, a vehicle exploding next to you, isn't it? Essentially, yeah, like, you know, yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah, yeah. Take people down, so yeah. yeah. Uh, the call of the wind, psychic power. Instead of moving in the movement phase, a psychic with this psychic power may grant the fleet two special rule to all friendly units with at least one model within six inches of the psychic. Yeah. This special rule lasts until the beginning of the controlling player's next turn. When using this power, the controlling player may choose to have the psychic make a psychic check. If the check is passed, then the effect is improved to grant the fleet for special rule. If the check is failed, then only the weaker form of the power is implied yeah. to the target unit and the psycho suffers perils yeah. of the war. Yeah. So it's interesting this, I think, because <laughs> you in order to so fleet two and fleet four, great, fine, whatever. You know, you basically you know, stacking all the things that we've seen so far on yeah. jet bikes and stuff like that is is absolutely great. However, you're almost gonna have to set this up before or um you know in the previous phase because you can't you're not allowed to move to get into position to use the power you've got to use it yeah. instead of a move yeah and then you're like yeah. blah, 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 you know um so i just think it's just something to to consider with this one whether it's safer to like use your movement and get closer or you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's just something to something to consider um uh on this about the ways you can use it but just having i mean the potential to have fleet four is pretty pretty nuts yeah yeah like you say you're forcing one unit to stay still to make 
a few other units move a bit faster. Yeah. Um, I don't hate this. I'm forty five points seems quite a bit for what it is, but uh, yeah, I think that telepathy, I think, is probably just better. Right. Um, because you can just shut down people's reactions before you try. Yeah. And that's probably just going to be more useful to you. I think if this was, you can use it instead of shooting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, this psychic power, then I think it yeah. would change a number of things. But if you've used it before and you can work out how to set it up, let us know in the comments below. Um, because I think I'd probably be more tempted to take divination or telepathy. Cool. Uh, so that is their console, and then we are into the big dog himself, Jagati Khan. Uh, do you want to go for his rules, Rob? Yeah, so um, basically, there are two profiles, we only have <laughs> one model for this guy, uh, so far. Um, and I'll just read kind of like the headline thing. So he's 440 points, he's he a foot, so when he's on his feet, he is movement <laughs> nine, and that's already <laughs> that basically grants the um. That's already got his plus one built in for his Legion rule. Uh, okay. He is a pathetic, though, weapon skill seven. I actually think weapon skill seven, they've done him dirty there. I think he should have been eight minimum. BS six, fine. Yeah. Uh, strength six, tough on six, fine, fine. Wound six, fine. Initiative eight. And I think this is where they've gone, okay, well, we'll make him a super high initiative uh, instead of giving him massive amount of weapon skill. But the problem is, is that you know, lots of primates he's going to be hitting on fives, right? You know, even yeah. Sigismund, he's going to be hitting on fours. It would just be going before Sigismund, but it'll be hitting on fours. Yeah, interesting, because Mortarian's weapon skill seven. Yeah. And I And in the books, he yeah. fucking kicks his teeth in. Yeah. Um yeah, it's interesting. So uh mm. and then a two up save, obviously. The only difference uh with Khan mounted is he's eighteen inches. He can move 18 inches. I'm not sure any other bike can move that far, though. I'm not no. sure. Like, it's all very well giving him like super like d distance, but any unit he's with, like, is not going to be able to no. keep up with him. He's got to run on his own, hasn't he? Um, and then he is uh, wounds uh, wound seven on the mounted version, and he's only cost twenty to get that bike. Though he only, and we'll talk about the bike in a second. Only an extra 25 points um, uh, for that, and then he also gains the. Uh, anti grav um unit type and um there are other rules but just remember you can't take cover safe if he's got anti grav uh he's got a number of uh war gear options we'll talk about the war gear options later but some of the special rules uh so he's got hit and run which is trebium for special yes. in fact he's initiative uh eight so i think it would just be a fail on a six i think i think a six would always be a fail on that uh he's got crusader so when he does sweeping advances he rolls two dice pathfinder we will Maybe Lee can check if he's got the rule book near, next uh -huh. to him. Um, exactly what Pathfinder does. He's got move through cover. That's great because he's not slow uh, for charges because he's on a bike, or you know, in any kind of way, he's not he's not slowed. Uh, and obviously, he is a loyalist and side of the white scars. Now, the side of the white scars are rule. So uh, he all infantry and cavalry models uh, with the white scar special rule in the same army as him, including Jagatai Khan himself. Gain the Furious Charge 1 special rule on any turn in which they have moved. So if they have moved, then they gain the Furious Charge 1 special rule, which is quite interesting, actually. That's quite a cool rule. Um, and also he gains an additional reaction during the opposing player's movement phase as well. Um, so Furious Charge 1, that's going to be pretty good. Um, uh, in um, Yeah, that's just going to be... be be pretty good uh can you go to the next page lee well i can yes yeah, yeah. other parts uh so he's got the wildfire panoply so it's a two up four up uh, except um sorry it's a two up four up during the shooting phase but it turns into a three up during the movement phase and the assault phase as well so obviously the three up for the movement phase is obviously going to be when he makes a, a dangerous train track and he'll get a three up um, okay the here you go phase is really just go on, on that one up. go for it a unit with at least one model with this special rule automatically passes dangerous dangerous terrain tests. Oh, right. Well, there you go. You don't even need a, th <coughs> a three-up invulnerable safe because he passes all dangerous terrain checks. So look at that. And um, so if you're looking for it in the rule book, it's in the S under special rules. Oh, it's in S. Oh, excellent. So, so that's why I couldn't find it. Oh, okay. Excellent. Well, yes. perfect place to put it. <laughs> um, but the most important thing is that he has a three up in the assault phase, which is actually pretty good. Um, lightning from the blue sky. So if he's held in reserve, you don't roll for him. You just pick when he comes in. 
Um, but you can't pick, obviously, on the first turn. Uh, and any unit he has joined may be brought into play from reserves without making a reserve roll. So he just comes in from turn two whenever you want him to come in. Uh, you don't even have to say when you want him to come in. You just go, okay, fourth turn in Jagatai. Um, if he is part of a flanking assault, then this rule applies to all units that are part of the flanking assault. So that's brilliant, right? Because oh, that's fucking can, great. Yeah. yeah. So you can, you, you know, he's going to come in. Your opponent knows he'll come in from that marker put there. But, you know, if you've got three units in flanking assault, you're just like, all of them come in at the time yeah. that you want them to come in, oh, which, that's is, really which is really, really powerful. Um, but it obviously doesn't apply to deep strike assault, drop pod assault, or subterranean assault. So basically, it's on the out flank where that could be really, really powerful. Um, and I think the fact it's guaranteed as well is that's yeah. what makes it really yeah, yeah. Um, Storm's Voice so this is a shooting weapon um, so we'll come to his firing protocols because he's got a Sujitsu pattern void bike but basically he can fire all his weapons because he's got firing protocols three so he's got his hand weapon and then he's got the two heavy bolters in his, in his jet bike uh, so it's range 12, strength 6, AP4 not, not too shabby uh, it's pistol 2 it's a rending 5 up, D flag concussive one and muscle so again i think that the concussive is uh yeah that's just it's just useful if you can get one of those off that that's that's useful yeah yeah uh the white tiger down so it's plus one strength so he was strength six i think and then it's ap2 so it goes up to strength seven so just a normal flat strength seven just normally okay but it's got the melee rule and then um storm's voice is a pistol so I think those combined together to give an extra yeah, attack. Yeah, yeah. I have to double check that one. But uh, and Julius Edge, so he is native initiative eight, but with Julius Edge, he would become initiative nine in a um, oh. in a in a challenge, which is pretty pretty amazing. Mm. So again, it goes back to that thing of he's trying to they're trying to you know not making too good in close combat, but giving a really high initiative. So he goes first, and then the weapon itself comes with Furious Charge too. So I. I'm not totally sure how this works. So I did look in the book for Furious Charge. It doesn't say that they necessarily stack under the Furious Charge rule. So I just assume that um, the Furious Charge 2 overrides the Furious Charge 1 that they get in the movement phase. Um, but, um, and I don't think it stacks the Furious Charge 3. I think that would be pretty pretty mental no. um and then it's murder strike five up with mastercraft as well so you, you know even if he's going against another primate he does have like a, a, you know, one of those can be re-rolled um he has a super duper bike so hopefully we'll get to see uh this model at some point so it's two mastercrafted heavy bolters that's that's great um but the thing about it being mastercrafted is you'll have to roll them separately um because you have to re-roll one and then re-roll uh one on the other one so just bear that in mind uh, he's got Hammer of Wrath 2, which is always nice because their strength, obviously strength 6. Um, and then Firing Protocols 3, as we said before. The Anti-Grav subtype. Now, um, the only thing to bear in mind with that is he can't take a cover save. It's Anti-Grav. Um, and he falls back 3d6. He's, he's never going to be falling back, so don't worry about that. I think they probably just put that in as a basic rule for War Gear, yeah. but he's just yeah. he's not going to be... He's not going to fall back. Um, and then... Um, when upgrades to have the void bike, he may join units that include models with the cavalry unit type, despite the usual restrictions and any rules that target the cavalry unit type are considered to affect a Jack's tie as if he had the same unit type as well. So all in all, he's pretty good. I think yeah. the only duff thing about him is the weapon skill, but that's made up for the fact that he's basically going to be going first in most occasions. Um, whether you think that's good or not, uh, or is better than the weapon skill, I'm probably out. I'd probably prefer to go at the same time as other Primarchs and have a better weapon skill. Um, but uh, he's still very, very, very strong. Um, and actually pours out quite a lot of fire. I mean, you know, that's quite a lot yeah. of bottle shots. And, you know, with his Storm voice as well, it's, it's pretty good. Um, so, yeah, I think that my temptation would be to outflank him with a couple of other units, I think. Yeah. Um, so you just got to have survivable units on the table already um, that can take a hell of a beating in that first turn with him then coming on. Yep. And also, it's a fucking awesome model. Yeah. Um, yeah. A very, really very good, good model. But it would be good to see a jet bike version. That would yeah. be awesome. It'll come. If they've done Fulgrim, it, it is jet bike version. Yeah. I just can't imagine how <laughs> big that Fucking bike oh, will be. God Christ, yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so we're into elites. Uh, I've got, gold. I've, I've got a lot to say about these guys. Oh, have you? Yeah, I've got a lot. Okay. To say. So okay, you read through it, and then I'll add my thoughts at the. At yeah. The so golden Kashyyyk squadron, hundred and forty points for free. Uh, fifteen inch movement, weapon skill five. Uh, force, force, force. Two wounds each. Uh, attacks one for the rider. Two attacks for the champion and leadership. Uh, eight and nine, respectively, for the champion and rider. Two plus save. Um, I'm surprised at the one attack. That surprises me. Um, so uh, they. Well, we'll come to that in a. We'll come to that in a. Oh, second. okay. Yeah. They are a uh, cavalry unit, uh, anti grav, and heavy. Uh, they come with the Shamshir jet bike, uh, artificer armor, chainsaw, bolt pistol, and the Contos power lance. And they have the hit and run, relentless, and hammer of wrath one special rules. Okay, um, so a few things to unpick with these come guys. On, come so on. the first oh, thing is wins. they are two wins. So they got a two up safe. So they're you know they're better than the just normal jet bikes, right? Um, but they have no invulnerable save of any kind, okay. and they cannot gain because they're heavy. So before we saw with the um, uh, Shamshir pattern jet bike. If you run, you gain a five up shadow yeah. save. They're heavy. They, they can't, can't ever gain yeah. the five up shadows. But that what's important here is that it's just the golden Keshig. So like your independent character, that's not a Shamshir rule. That's a golden Keshig. Okay. Okay. So what is good though about the heavy is that they can re-roll the two up on the blast. Yeah. So, you know, if it's not a fucking rending blast that gets you they can <laughs> they can re-roll it so that you know that is a, a slight positive yeah. um but the issue is that they mount up quickly in terms of points because they're they're 40 points each they'll only have one attack we'll come back to their weapon a bit because that's all they have they have one attack each yeah that surprises that's me that does but, and, yeah. and you can't gain an attack for charging either it's just that's they have one attack that's it uh um, why don't oh okay yeah, so their ungainly rule means that they have uh, one attack. That but they get another it. attack for bolt pistol chainsaw, uh, won't they? It's two handed, right? So you. Oh, uh, fucking hell. Sorry. So, yeah, so okay. again, there is one yeah, okay. attack. Yeah. So if you flop those attacks, you are fucked. <laughs> okay. So we'll come to the, like, the weapon options in a bit. But I think that in general, there's two ways that you can play these, which is that you have a, gr a small unit of five which is 220 points, no upgrades. And you just see what carnage that you can do because you can yeah. do carnage here. Or you fucking go for it. You have eight in a unit with a chaplain, with an apothecary. Um, okay. But they're going to get... Because you, you got the chaplain to re-roll oh, any fail yeah. but they're going to be so expensive if a strength eight rending blast like that, lands on that right. last that's cannon the squad is going to do fucking damage on these and, and that i think that's one of the criticisms of the golden <laughs> cashier which is yeah. that you know without an invun save they are super squishy but whatever they hit and if they can hit it like it's dead whatever they hit is dead. Right. But we'll come to the we'll come to the rules in a bit but yeah go go for the options um so uh you can take up to three additional riders at 40 points each uh any model May exchange its chainsaw for a power weapon for 10 points each or a Chernobyl weapon for 10 points each. Uh, you can take a Legion Vexilla and the champion can take a Thunder Hammer for 25 points. Oh, I am. Um, so, yeah, so you can essentially use the Contos Power Lance or you can use your chainsaw, can't you? And then you can replace the chainsaw yes. for a Chernobyl weapon. But yes. I guess the problem with that is they become very very expensive that that is a problem but also the contus lance i think can only be used on the charge um and uh, the the power like the chargeable weapons you would use in like say like the second round of combat. right okay so the contus power lance is uh range nothing strength 10 ap1 melee ungainly lance brutal free sudden strike for two-handed and ungainly, a model may only attack with this weapon on a turn in which it makes a successful charge, but does not gain a bonus attack for charging, or from any special rules that would normally grant additional attacks. So I read that, 
Like you could charge a unit and use your chainsaw or power weapon or whatever yeah. you've done, but you no, can only ever use the contos on the turn you've charged. Yeah, and also, Billy, a successful charge as well. Because the other thing about these guys is that you could just be like, oh, okay, I'm going to hold the line. And then they can't mm. use their contos power, power lances. Yeah. And then you it's just a weird com- one, isn't it? you've just completely neutralized, uh, neutralized it. So what I found is you have to be really savvy about using the cold Keshe- golden Keshig with other units. So like you, you using attack squad, getting in first, and then using and then charging with the golden Keshig. Right? Okay. Or yeah, you know, what whichever way you you're gonna do it. I but, go on. Sorry. But the Contus Power Lance are absolutely fucking murderous because they're strength 10 AP1. Yeah. They're Lance, so the, um, what, you know, you, it, it will basically be 12. The, the Lance will make a armor value 12. So more likely than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, be, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going yeah, to you're, you're be, be popping it. tanks, aren't you? It's brutal three. So great against contemptors. You know, it's going to be wounding on twos and it's brutal three. Each one is brutal three. It's sudden, sudden strike four. So they're initiative eight on the charge. Um, but the the crippling thing is obviously the hold line, but also the fact they only have one attack each. So yeah. in, with five, you're only going to get two and a half through. Yeah. Like if you go and get weapon skill five, they're like a contemptor, yeah. right? So. I like the idea of these if you were running a jet bike based army as a little bit of anti tank, like close combat anti tank. Yeah. Um is is how I like the idea of these. Yeah. But I just yeah, it's just the fact they don't have any invulnerable save. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I, I believe I like I yeah, they I, called I, a glass I, cannon is but is that how <laughs> some people would describe <laughs> describe them. <laughs> Uh, I uh, yeah, I like a couple of squads of three of these, just cutting about, popping tanks. Yeah, because that's gonna it's gonna cause havoc, right? You're unlucky not to pop a tank, even yeah. with three of these. Yeah, it's um, funny though because, but also you've got the the Shamshir jet bike has the the like the fa- the flamer pinning shot, so like, you're kind of like, oh, it's good for tanks, but really you also want to be yeah, dudes, but you're not going to kill that many dudes no. with these lances. That's the thing, you, like you want multi wound models but that's know, why i feel do. like again if you're gonna do these just go balls deep and spend the points on the yeah. uh, and and i uh, think weapons that, yeah it's interesting isn't it but um yeah so really interesting unit um i use them for alpha legion a squad of five 220 points no upgrades on them and um yeah they they do work every single uh the the models are fucking brilliant as yeah, well great. the mark three riders um they look awesome. Yeah. Cool. Golden Kashir. Uh Ebon Kashir. Uh cohort two hundred points. Uh do you want to talk through these, mate? Uh yeah. So Ebon Kashik, we have spoken about these already. So these are obviously the guys that you can take in the um uh in this Haki Mazan, but they don't come with line. Um so we've talked about the Karash rule already, so we don't need to kind of go over that one. Um, but it's uh good. Yeah, you don't get victory points for them essentially. Uh, so, and they are elites as well. So they are movement eight, um, and that's just already got their plus one um, movement rule built in. Their weapon skill four. Um, uh, yeah, two, that's two wounds, uh, three attacks. Well, three attacks makes up for it, right? Because only just there, and I think I have three attacks. So yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, leadership ten and a two plus save as well so i think the thing is if you're just taking these guys normally um in a, in a normal legion list you couldn't add like an independent character like a chaplain to re-roll those fails because the chaplain doesn't have the crash rule only through the yeah. only through the sagi mazan can you start giving independent characters the crash rule so it's definitely something to um to consider it comes with the power glaive that we spoke about before so that was uh plus one strength ap3 breaching five up it's an all right weapon. It's okay. Um, and then they themselves have some good rules. So stubborn and their leadership 10. That's that's brilliant. They feel no pain five up as well. Um, the I'm not entirely sure whether you want to kind of really upgrade too much with them. I think probably the grenade harness, you're probably going to want to yeah, yeah, have yeah. that if you're not coming out of something with the frag launchers. 
um you know Volkart Chargers is is always a good good option but I I think you're probably just going to want to keep them fairly um fairly bare bones I assume as well the power the power glaive is a two-handed weapon um so um yeah yeah you're not going to want a combi bolter and power weapon really you're just going to want to stick to the glaive so you just keep them fairly bare bones these are all right but I think they become better because the fact you put independent characters with them yes. in a Sagumas analyst. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Totally. Um pretty cool models though. The yeah, models I was gonna say the models cool. are great. Um yeah. I, I don't hate these rules. Like leadership ten is fucking brilliant. Yeah. Uh free attacks is great. Stubborn, feel no pain, see two plus five plus five plus. Like yeah. that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Um They'll murder yeah. they these would be really great at hunting Tatmarines. Yeah, but yeah, you're not yeah. gonna you're not gonna do well against um, other elite Terminator units. No, no. So don't expect to send these in on somebody else's elite Terminators and do well. And crush people. Yeah, you will get fucking <laughs> murdered. But then if you do get murdered, they don't get any victory points for it anyway. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Good point. But so they are they become much better with a chaplain in Sagi Masa. Mm. Cool, yeah, cool. yeah. Oh, oh this is the you. this is the one. This is the one. So um Kaizagan um, Assault Speeder Squadron, is that how we're calling it? Yeah, um, Kaizagan, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Hundred and five points. Uh fifteen inch movement with the uh, white scar special rule already included. Mm -hmm. So weapon skill four, but skill four, strength four, toughness seven. Yeah, Wounds so tougher four. than a javelin. Tough tough four, than a javelin. Yeah. Uh, two attacks, leadership nine, oh, and, and a leadership three nine. plus Whoa. save. That's yeah, so, great. Yeah, so they are also... Um, yeah, that's amazing, actually, because I think normal javelins have leadership eight, so that's really, really good. Yeah. Um, uh, so the cavalry, anti-grav, and also heavy, they come with bolt pistol, chainsaw, power armor, and assault speeder. Um they have the Deep Strike Special Rule Relentless Firing Protocols 4, Harbingers of the Legion, Outflank, Hit and Run. So Harbingers of the Legion, basically only other Harbingers of the Legion can join other Harbingers of the Legion. Basically, they can't be joined by anything, essentially is what that means. Okay. But also, yeah. they get to reroll Shrouded Shaves, Saves because they're Harbingers ah. of the Legion. So that's actually pretty good. Yeah. But um, very survivable. So the Kaisagan Assault Speeder uh comes equipped with one Keras assault cannon and two Reaper auto cannons. I should have probably put the rules for those weapons in. Well the Kiris is strength six, AP four, six shots, and it's rending six up. And I think the Reaper auto cannons two shots. I think it's twin link to Reaper auto cannon. So it's two yeah. shots, yeah. uh strength seven, AP four, and rending six up, I think. Uh um, these will fucking murder Solar Auxilia. Oh. Absolutely fucking murder them. <laughs> Poor humans. Leave them alone. Uh, and you can add up to two additional Kaisergan assault speeders for 105 points each, and any model may take up to two hunter killer missiles for five points each. Um, which personally, I think you might as well just slap the missiles on. Um, but yeah, I like these a lot. Yeah, these are great. So I think that um, if you're looking for an anti infantry fast option, these would make a lot of sense. I think that so each one is pouring out 10 let's go without the hunter killers i think it's 10 shots a piece i will double check a um uh, a reaper auto cannon um, i uh i guess my only thought is i guess it depends how you're running your white scars but um again i just think of jet bike heavy armies you've probably got a lot of anti-infantry fire just on yeah. your jet bikes alone do you yeah. really need to be adding more? But I suppose it depends how you're running your army. But um, yeah, I think that's a fair thing to say because if you're, but also this would be actually quite good against light armor. You know, if you think about yeah. Kiris, yeah, yeah. you know, and and the also cannon. Actually, these things in the rear light armor is actually going to be all right. And if you think about combining these, say, with um, uh, you know, they can outflank, but you know, combined with Jagatai Khan coming in, you know, squad. He's with a command squad or whatever, and a squad of these guys coming in, they can pop whatever, yeah, you know, whatever light armor it might be in the side or the rear, yeah, and then come, come. Yeah, I think um, my only other thought as well is the carries you're getting within twenty four inches, and I tend to find with these things you want to keep them away 
further back. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a fair. But the fair Reaper Auto Cannon is thirty-six inch, strength yeah. seven, AP four, heavy two, rending six plus, twin linked. Twin linked. Yeah. So it's yeah. So you're gonna they always be staying within thirty-six to twenty-four inches, yeah. aren't you? Um, but I think the other thing is that there there'll be such a a nuisance for your opponent these at strength seven this is going to be so difficult to get rid of it's the um, classic unit that a couple of these you're not you're worried about but are yeah. you worried about enough to pour enough fire into it because it's toughness seven uh to to actually kill it you know toughness seven four wounds yeah uh a couple of these it's yeah it's the classic thing of do i shoot these or do i shoot the yeah whatever is coming straight towards me yeah difficult difficult um, i i really like it. so i would consider these and have been considered sorry and i have been considering these for alpha legion as a as a okay. an alternative to um golden Kashik. okay interesting and fast attack slot which um yeah fast attack which is great so they're usually yeah. freed up so yeah yeah really um I like a mixture of these and javelins, to be honest. I think Agreed. the javelins for your anti anti tank and yep. these just to be a fucking nuisance. Yeah, anti infantry um, and um uh uh anti infantry and light tanks as well. Light tanks, yeah. 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 Great great choice, uh, great choice. Cool. Uh so we're on to HQ Kins Kinzar. Yeah. Uh, two hundred and twenty points, the master of the Kashik, the chosen of the Ch Ch Chagan. Fuck, I can't read today. Uh, uh so Kagan, Kagan. Kagan. Mm. Kagan. Uh movement eight, weapon skill six, ballistic skill four. So he's nearly as good as his primark. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> ballistic skill four, strength four, toughness four, wounds four, initiative six, attacks five, leadership ten, two plus save. Great uh, stats. So, Even starting off yeah. great stats. Yeah, that's good. Uh so his character, he is also unique. Yeah. Uh, it comes in Tartarus so, Terminator so, so armor, you, but you couldn't buy. So I think that you couldn't buy a um, a hawk for him because he's unique. I think that's. Oh right. uh, yes, yeah, yeah. So don't bother with him. That's it. Fuck him off. <laughs> Can we just take a normal character? <laughs> yeah, uh, he's got Iron Halo, Grenade Harness, and the Tales of the Dragon. The grenade harness is such an overlooked piece of oh, kit, but you're God. fucked. If you're going yeah. through difficult terrain and yeah. you're a terminator, you're fucked. Like, yeah. that, you know, if you're a contemptor going through difficult terrain, you are fucked. Like, you've got and to I, go initiative one. I think it's one of these things that I think it's just one of these things that people forget about. Yeah. And actually, if you've got a terminator unit coming towards you and they don't yeah. have a grenade harness, yeah. just move into cover. Yeah. I mean, I guess it depends what your terminator unit is equipped with. Um, but. Yeah, it's just going to fuck you, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely going to fuck you. Uh, special rules, uh, obviously White Scars, independent character, Master of the Legion, counter attack, two, furious charge, one, bulky, two, relentless, stubborn, Master of the Kashig, uh, and he has the Warlord, chosen of the, however you say that, Kagan. Kagan. Yeah. Uh, and he is obviously loyalist. Um, if Chosen is the army's warlord, Kunzar automatically has the Chosen of the Kagan warlord trait and may not select any other warlord trait. So, uh, warlord trait, if... Da, 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 sorry. Uh, if Kinzars is the army's warlord, once per battle, the controlling player may choose to either bring a single eligible friendly unit or group of friendly units assigned to a deep strike assault or flanking assault into play from reserve automatically instead of rolling or have it remain in reserve for that turn. Uh, this may not be used to bring a unit or units into play on a turn when a reserve's roll could not normally be made for them. In addition, an army whose warlord has this trait may make an additional reaction during the assault phase. As long as the warlord has not been removed as casualty. So, if you are planning to do a deep strike or a flanking assault, this is fucking brilliant. Uh, just to be able to choose to bring it in. Um, yeah, so he doesn't have to be on the table. No. So he himself could... Oh, oh but he would have to gain... But you'd have to put it with like a warmonger or something because he doesn't have a deep strike. No. He doesn't have a deep strike, but he does... But he could you be off could bring him down, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Master of the Kashig. Uh, if Kinsar is selected as a leader of a legion, Tartarus command squad, any model in that Tartarus command squad may replace its power weapon with a power yes. gauge. For five yes, plus, plus there you five go. That's each. exactly what we were talking about previously, wasn't it? Which is that um, you can't, those fucking command squads cannot um, take, because they're not characters, they cannot take 
um the paraglows but they so they go completely thought of that so i uh, eat my words and um, there'll be weapon skill five yeah mm. yeah and the b- important thing about that i think is that he gives them stubborn because the bat and then yes. the, the yeah, banner yeah. gives them leadership 10 scoring. And, yeah and, and scoring as well so and that's i think so overlooked with the command squad that the banner does not give stubborn so if you lose a combat you, you you're in real trouble um so yeah, but you can only max out the Tartarus Command Squad to five, five to five yeah. men. Isn't five, it? Yeah. yeah. So you're either taking a Proteus for them, a Spartan if you want some extra characters, or you know, yeah, adding a adding a Warmonger in to give them deep strike, yeah. and, um, and then coming down when you want. Excuse me. Um, and his uh, war gear, the Tales of the Dragon. Uh, da, 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 two separate but identical weapons and the bonus for wielding two melee weapons has already been included in Kinzar's profile the weapons listed here are counted as power weapons da, 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 da. when attacking with the Tales of the Dragon in close combat select one of the profiles to use from the sh- those shown below for both weapons at the start of each of the controlling players assault phase before any attacks are made so we have split the mountain which is plus three strength, AP2, melee, unwieldy, mastercrafted. And we have part the horse's mane, which I'm sorry, is the most fucking ridiculous name ever. <laughs> which I think is... the uh, custodies <laughs> ones are worse. It's like, you know, cut the <laughs> rainbow, right? And things like that. Cut the rainbow. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Is someone just selling Skittles. <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, so part the horse's mane, plus one strength, AP2, melee, precision strikes, three plus, mastercrafted. Yeah. Um, I really like that. I love when you get options for things like this. Um, I have actually fought against Kinzar and he used Split the Mountain and chopped one of my Contemptor Dreadnoughts to pieces. Um, yeah, because he has Furious Charge 1, right? So that Split the Mountain would actually be plus 4 strength, um, which is brilliant. That Because he has Furious Charge, he is actually really plus four strength so it becomes a power fist right it's basically a massive yeah massive yeah power yeah power yeah. Yeah. Fist. yeah um and then part of the horse's mane is interesting because um it's a good weapon you know it's strength five ap2 but i'd be less inclined to use that in a challenge because of this precision strike three plus so you'd almost go okay one of the command squad can take the charge Yes, and yeah. then part of the horse's mane. You like, I'll part your horse's mane. I'll yeah, part your horse's mane. Part, yeah. So you know, you take out apothecary, <laughs> take out yeah, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um. Just yeah, becomes massively useful. And then six I, attacks on the charge is great. I think precision strike is great. Yeah. If they've got like, if you're going up against a unit that's got a couple of power axes hidden yeah. at the back, just get yeah. rid of them. Yeah. Um, because it, he's an issue of six as well so getting rid of them early on is yeah is yeah 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 it's um, counter attack two as well which is uh yeah is brilliant yeah so having two so he only gets one on the charge but he gets two when getting charged it's pretty cool yeah um i really like him 220 points um i guess my only thing i'd say is i'm not a huge fan of deep strike assault or i think flanking assault is good um I just feel there are a lot of counters in this edition. Yeah. Where you could deep strike half your force in and it's basically fucking removed as it lands. Yeah. Um but yeah, I really like this. And it's I love awesome. the fact you can give Tartarus Command Squad power yeah. glaives. Yeah, it's awesome. Um cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh All I'm not right. sure it necessarily would though, because I think a charnable saber would be just as it's yeah, slightly, slightly worse, isn't it? Because it's not plus one strength and it's not AP three. But I plus yeah, it just it's... looks cool. Power glaive looks cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll give you that. It looks. Cool. <laughs> uh, oh, that's it for characters. Apparently, unless I've made a horrendous mistake. Here. Uh, I think there is one in the legacies, which is the Solomon Solomon Khan. Oh, uh, we might get to him then. Okay. Um, cool. Okay. So, uh, white scars in duck tees. Uh, they have uh, Legion to Spoiler Squads uh, all models in a unit modified by the White Scars Legion Inductee template gain the Inductee unit subtype uh, the Spoiler Sergeant unit modified by the White Scars Legion Inductee template cannot have their power weapon upgraded to a power glaive uh, oh, interesting. 
models in a unit mod is that because they're just not worthy enough i think that's basically think? Yeah. yeah they haven't earned their like power glaive yet. yeah yeah it's cool um the the sergeant's just like well fuck you i didn't want your shitty little power glaive <laughs> anyways you dicks uh, all models in unit modified by the White Scars Legion is like to template replace Heart of the Legion special rule with Proof of Valor. So Proof of Valor. When a model with this special rule suffers an unsaved wound during the fight subphase while locked in combat with at least one enemy unit whose majority weapon skill is five or more, it can make a special Proof of Valor roll to avoid suffering the wound. Roll a d6 each time an unsaved wound is suffered. On a result of five plus, the unsaved wound is discounted. Treat it as having been saved. Oh, and right. any other result, the wound is taken as normal. So yeah, it's basically it's, feel no pain, isn't it? It's a yeah. damage. It's a damage yeah. mitigation. Yeah. This is a damage mitigation roll. Any model may oh, make only a single damage mitigation roll of any type for any given wound. One or more wounds is discounted due to this special rule, and the unit that benefited from this special rule has not been entirely removed as casualties or forced to fall back. Then at the end of the fight subphase. That unit is said to have proved their valour. And at the end of the battle, if any units from a player's army proved their valour, that player scores one additional victory point. So I think, going back to Sajimazan, I think that these are actually a great option for your troop choices um, for Sajimazan, actually. I think that they... I don't think they're very fluffy for Sajimazan. Um, no. But um, basically your entire infantry would have some kind of five up damage damage mitigation roll of some kind of shape or yeah only if you're against weapon skill five yeah so oh that's interesting okay so yeah that's interesting because the whole army gains um the whole army gains the crash rule right so all yes. the infantry gains crash yeah so you can't lose victory points for them and they all gain five up feel no pain right yeah in that in that right so in this scenario, so they would gain the crash rule and the five up, five up, feel no pain. So anybody who's weapon skill four or less, they would have their five up, feel no pain. And then anybody who they're fighting weapon skill five, they would have their proof of valor safe uh, and then have the potential to gain a, a victory point victory at point the point end. Yeah. As well. yeah. So yeah. I think they're yeah. a, a good combination. Uh, for yeah, I like the, that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, I like that. Uh, okay, so this is the exemplary battles unit. Um, yeah. I love the I love the name of this. White scars, dark sons of death. Um, yes, yes. So, <laughs> hundred fifty five points for a squad of five. Um, you've got the dark sun, and then you've got the death champion, which is obviously the sergeant. So the dark sun is movement eight, um, and then just a standard marine um stats with a three plus save and then the death champion has weapon skill five two attacks leadership eight and a three plus save they come equipped with bolt pistol chain sword frag grenades crack grenades rad grenades power armor legion warhawk jump pack um they have stubborn shadow of death storm sears conclave and invocation of the raising tempest um do you want to quickly go through these special rules? Because yeah, I'm just sure. using my voice there. Yeah, sure. So um, it, essentially, they're um, destroyers, aren't they? I mean, they're White Scars destroyers. That's essentially yeah. what they are, just before we carry on. So because they've got the, the rad grenades. Um, yeah, it's interesting that they're stubborn, which is pretty good. And then the Death Champion being white, Weapon Skill 5. That's that's pretty cool. I think that the only thing I would say is that they're only one wound. But let's see if they're... It's got a fuck ton of special rules. So let's have a look. Yeah. Um, they may only be joined by a Legion Centurion with the Stormseer upgrade or a Legion Centurion with the Morita upgrade. Uh, note that Tech Marines and Apothecaries may not be assigned to them. But that's absolutely fine. The Stormseer upgrade is quite interesting. So that gives you quite a lot of options. Um, yeah. I think that the obvious one would probably be Divination or um, uh, Telepathy, I think, because these guys, are gonna they're going to feel a bit squishy to me. But uh, yes, yeah, it might be a good, a good option. Um so Stormseer's Conclave. So this is uh, basically a, st a Stormseer can take them as a retinue squad. Oh, that's that's really good. Yeah. Okay. So instead of an elite's choice, a unit selected as a retinue may have one Legion Centurion. So upgrade and the 
um, special rules from the same detachment selected by the controlling players. The Dark Sun squad, blah 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 blah. Dark Sun basically does not use it. Yeah, basically, it's just the fucking rules, isn't it? As the um, as a command squad, but yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. really good. So it start, doesn't eat up one of the elites, um, and it's quite a cool option for Stormseer to <laughs> to have. Uh, and then the Raising Tempest, a unit with at least one model of this special rule gains the Fleet 2 and Rage 2 special oh. rules for the duration of the current assault phase when attempting a charge against an enemy unit that they outnumber at the point that charge is declared. Uh, that's pretty cool. That yeah. I think, yeah, that's really good. Fleet 2, Rage 2, bear in mind that they've got Warhawk jump packs, so they're going to be able to move 13, I think. Um, and so they're going to get plus three for their charge then anyway so three for so plus five for their charge that's pretty gnarly that's pretty good um so they can take additional dark suns they can take up to 15 which is pretty good at 20 points uh a piece i guess the problem with that i think is that well it's not so much a problem but a veteran is two wounds weapon skill five um and they're 18 points yeah these guys have rad grenades and a warhawk jump pack uh and a few other rules yeah mm, yeah okay um charnable weapons great option any model can take a charnable weapon great option any model can take a power glaive now they only have one attack um so only two attacks on the charge with power glaive you're not going to be getting a lot of attacks so it might be worth going for the charnable weapon because yeah. you get yeah. at least you get additional close combat combat attacks um one in five can take plasma and hand flamers. Yeah, fine. Uh, one in, in five can take plasma gun, melt gun, flamer. Yeah, and then death champion. You can give them, uh, give them other weapons. Uh, power fist, lightning claw, power weapon, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, lightning claws option. Yeah, and then artificer armor, and then melt bombs, as you might expect. These, I think, are okay. They're all right. They're pretty cool. I, uh, see, um, I really like these. I I think um, Destroyer Assault Squads are quite an underlooked unit. I think they actually hit a lot harder than people think, Just even just with chain swords. Mm. Um, and the main difference between these and a Destroyer Squad is that Destroyers come with two attacks each and the Sergeant comes with three attacks. Right, okay. But the fact that they get Rage... Yeah, uh, race two is good. Isn't it? Yeah, oh, okay. Th yeah. yeah, I think these would actually, if you threw these against, say, uh, like tax squads, you know, something like that, they're just gonna absolutely fucking chew through them. Okay, yeah. So the power glaive actually on the charge becomes way more enticing because of the rage two, right? Yeah. I think that's, um, but even the charnable weapons would be. Uh, I just think you need to be careful with what you upgrade because they become very expensive very, very quickly for a unit that could literally be shot off the table in yeah. a single turn so of shooting. Easy. yeah especially with one wound that's the yeah. i think that's the problem because they become they, they you'd go wow these are great because they are so survival with two wounds but yeah you've got to be careful you know you could have a squad of 10 with say five power glaives in and i think that that would probably be enough and you can go hunting for tap rates right yeah yeah yeah, yeah i like them i like them I, are they the best option? Maybe not, but um, I think they're quite cool. I yeah, think you could do some yeah, cool modelling. Cool. Yeah, very rare to see a... I mean, if ever, see a librarian with a... Yeah. Conclave yeah, yeah. Dude. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Nice one. Okay, what's up next? Um, Balkan's Claws. Oh, these are quite interesting because these are like scout dudes, aren't they? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, so they... Well, they've got a four-up safe, so yeah, they're not... They're not oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, they are... Movement nine that includes their um uh you know includes their white scar rule uh one attack base two for the champion leadership seven leadership eight that's really everything we need to know and one one wound piece and they've got a four up save okay they've got scout armor they've got two lightning claws holy crap so on the charge they get four attacks uh four attacks each uh frag and crack grenades and shroud bombs so they'll always be six inches further away when shooting them they're light and they're skirmish so i think they gain plus one to a cover save when they're in cover if they're okay um, yeah if they're light and skirmish i think it just means that they can be three inches apart yeah yeah um 
and they can outflank they can move through cover so they're going to be very fast and precision strikes five up as well wow okay so you've got lightning claws which rend on the six uh and then you've got precision strikes five up as well and then marked for death which i think you can re-roll ones i think or you get like fred me i'd have to double check that one but um or maybe you can check that one while i go through uh so you can add to them for up to five more falcon claws for 16 points apiece um, and any model can have a power weapon, a bolt pistol. You can exchange the falcon claws. I'm not. I'm. I'd be careful about changing the two lightning claws because I actually think they're a bit of a bargain for two lightning claws. Um, uh, they can have a cyber hawk. Uh, not that that will be massively useful on your shooting because you don't have any shooting weapons um, as they come. But it would be useful to give you plus one, uh, plus one on the charge. Um, and then your Claws Champion can take a variety of weapons, including a Thunder Hammer, Power Fist, Hand Flamers, etc. I would just be tempted, though, like a squad of 10 of these with like Lightning Claws and yeah. Hoth Kerry, I think, would actually be uh, yeah. Pretty, yeah, yeah. Um, pretty good. 16 points a piece for like for Lightning Claws is, is pretty amazing. I mean, Lightning Claws just cost like 10, 15 points, don't they? Yeah, you, I've yeah, got a yeah. Score with them. Yeah, this seems like a total bargain. Man alive. The problem so, is we just don't have scout models. That's, that's the yeah, uh, there's some 40k ones out that you could probably... Um, use. Okay. Black Templar, um, like, inducti things. Yeah, I think space. they've released some new ones. I, I mean, I okay. could be making up totally. These are so amazing. for death. At the start of the battle, once both armies have set up all their models, including any units of the infiltrate special rule, a single enemy unit may be chosen by a player that controls any models with this special rule. This unit is considered marked for death. When any models with this special rule controlled by that player are used to make an attack of any kind against the enemy unit, their controlling player has marked for death. All failed to wound rolls of one may be re-rolled. Okay, yeah. So you're failing, um, you get to re-roll those failed ones and yeah. you got shred on the lightning claws as well. So it's gonna yeah. be, you're going to get most of your attacks through. Um, I really like these. Ooh, I really about. like these. It's pretty, 16 points a piece. Yeah, they're amazing. <clears throat> Uh, you can give them melter bombs. I quite like the idea of little five man squads of melter bombs, but yeah, I think a couple of squads of ten, just infiltrate them in. Fucking uh, yeah, these are brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. I hadn't even really looked at these rules. Usually the uh, well, the exemplary uh, is this uh, not exemplary legacies, isn't it? Legacies, yeah. They're, uh, they tend to be a bit hit and miss, don't they? But uh, Yeah, these are brilliant. These are really, yeah. really good. Yeah, I wonder yeah, I like if you them. add an apothecary to them, whether they lose like their light or skirmish rules. I think that'd be something you have oh, to check. Oh, I'm not um, sure, yeah. Or whether um, they gain the light and skirmish rules. I guess the only thing with a White Scars army is you probably are... I think they gain it. Yeah, I'd have right. to double check. Um, um, Cool, cool, cool. Right, let's go to the next unit. Because there must be only one more unit left, I think. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's the HQ. Top. Cool. So he's quite a complicated uh, character because of his interaction with the Silent Sisters. Um, so he is a unique character, which obviously interacts with lots of things that we've kind of brought up today about what can and can't have particular war gear, what can and can't have going Saggy Sam, etc. So uh, Solomon Khan. 108 points is obviously a character and he's unique as well now solomon khan as a base that's just his on his two feet uh he has uh movement eight uh weapon skill six blitz skill five strength five oh. which is pretty uh pretty awesome uh three wounds issue five tax four issue ten two up he is basically praetor but just a little bit better within the strength now uh some of his other options so he has a combi melter that's always going to be mega useful uh, he's got Frank Crack Grenades, Iron Halo, and Artificer Armor. So he's got two up, four up, and then he's got also got a special weapon. We'll come to that in a bit. Uh, special rules, he's got Relentless, which you'd just expect, Ally of the Silent Sisterhood, and he's a Loyalist, so only taking a Loyalist this. And he can take a Scimitar jet bike for 30 points, not a Shamshir pattern jet bike, unfortunately, just a Scimitar one. Okay. Now, uh, this... Is this his Warlord trait, or is it not his warlord trait or does yeah. he not come with any warlord trait that's interesting no, i okay. think i think it's meant to be his warlord trait okay that's oh, okay all right so ally of the silent sisterhood a detachment that includes solomon khan may include a single knight centura as a non-compulsory hq choice without taking up a force organization slot a raptor cadre may be taken as a retinue for the knight centura included in this way 
uh, and they are treated as small brothers. I can tell you that that's actually really, really good because the rep, the the Raptor Ricardo is actually really great. And then you can buy a dedicated transport for them as well. So just to add a little um, uh, silent sisterhood in there and then not take up your allied detachment and you can fill up that allied detachment with something else, right? You know, so you've got potentially three forces, uh, three things in there. Um, his weapon. So it is the Tian Shan or Tian Shan. Uh, it's counted as a power weapon. It is strength 10 AP2. It is, I always thought that it's basically a thunder hammer, right? It's essentially yeah. what, what it yeah. is. Uh, so strength 10 AP2, brilliant, brilliant. Um, it's unwieldy. It's brutal too. Uh, it's a specialist weapon and it's got reaping blow as well. So reaping blow is always lovely. Uh, and then hammer hand. Now the hammer hand rule. Uh, he may choose to make a single attack at initiative to step ten with the profile below instead of using his normal attacks. And then this would be so hammer hand. You get one attack. Is that yeah? One single yeah. attack. Uh, and it's not an automatic hit. You've got to roll for it. So be careful who you roll against. So strength twelve, <laughs> AP two, melee, and brutal three. So if you think that you want just you know to go if you. You know, you can see this against, say, you're going up against Empress Children. They've got the drop on you. Yeah. And you're just like, I'm going to die to Eidolon because he charged in. I'm just going to Hell Mary it and then just <laughs> roll one of these and see if I can instant kill it. Oh, man. Um, I fucking love that. I love little bits like that in a game where you're like, yeah, yeah I'm just going to go for it. And you're either like, yeah, yeah. or you're like, and no. he's got, yeah, exactly. I think that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it could be yeah, re really, really nice this as well. So um, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then the other thing to say, just to add to that, so because the Sisters of Silence are sworn brothers, he can always join that Sister of Silence squad. Um, okay. they, just, they wouldn't be able to go in a transport, but he can always join that squad as well. Yeah. And I think that um, those guys can take... Yeah, I think each one of those guys is a chosen warrior as well. So yeah, just something to bear in mind. Lots of uh, play and lots of interesting things that you could potentially do with Solomon Khan. I know a couple of people who actually take him, and and yeah, pretty pretty cool. I've seen him on the table a couple of times. So, mm. um, but now I now I know what he can do. I'll be looking out for that. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, yeah, I love that. That's fucking brilliant. Um, really good. Cool. I think I'm not sure, but I think. That is it. Yes. All right, so why don't we start with you? Why don't you tell us what you think of the White Scars? Uh, so I really, really, really like them, I'll be honest. Um, if I was looking to do a new Legion, I think White Scars would be the one I'd be going for. Yeah. Um, I think speed is key. Uh, I think there's a lot of shenanigans that you can do with them, especially including outflanking and the cyber fucking bird thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, yeah, I am a big fan. And also just like the aesthetic of them, I just think they look fucking brilliant. I think yeah. you can really uh, go balls deep with all the different markings and, and the red and white. I just, yeah, yeah. I think it's awesome. Um, uh i guess uh i think my only thing i would say is maybe you tend to be forced down to a certain way of playing these um uh kind of jet bikes which could probably possibly get a bit boring after a while um but I'd love to see armies that aren't just jet bikes. I'd love to see kind of assault squads. And I'm sure they're out there. I just haven't seen them. Um, but yeah, I am a big fan. Uh, I just want to see a Khan model on a jet bike. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And what about yourself? Massive. Uh, yeah, I think that they've always been a legion that's really attracted me. I've just never got around to it. Other, other projects have got in the way. I think... Um, you know, you think about how you would list build, and I just think that I probably wouldn't go down the the conventional jet bike route. Right. I probably wouldn't do Chagorian Brotherhood. Yeah, I could just really see myself just going down the lots of squads of Golden Keshig, like you know, four times five squads of Golden Keshig. 
yeah, 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 yeah. Packing the the fast attacks for the speeders, you know, the Kaisergan or whatever it's called, and then some javelins. Um, and then your troops being, you know, tax squads or assault squads or whatever. Pro- probably even, you know, ta- tax squads would be would be my my jam. Although I think assault squads would, would be pretty good. Um, and not locking yourself into um Chigorian Brotherhood. I think the Sagi Mazan is interesting as a war law, as a as a right of war because um it, it's so obviously good but it's obviously forcing you down an infantry route you know it's the opposite yeah. of the tr- yeah. Tr- tr- yeah, yeah. Rows, which is forcing you down the jet by route the problem with the Saki Mazan though i think is that um you it, it, the Saki Mazan right tells a particular story um and I think you just got to be careful you're not taking it because it's so obviously good, and that's the story that you're trying to tell with your actual art. Yeah, is the, yeah. Is, is the thing I would say. Um, and then the one of the standout units. So I think Golden Keshig are excellent, despite some of their drawbacks, as long as you keep them cheap. But I mean, as you said, you could have multiple squads of three just hunting. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I like the idea of that. Yeah. Um, but I think the Falcon's claws. I've not. I think I've seen them once on the tabletop. But I'd like to see. I'd like more data on those because I think that those potentially have the real capacity to be really dangerous. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, I think combining the Inducti with the Sagi Mazan is going to be is going to be pretty hard for an opponent to get around, especially in a kill points kill points mission. Um, and then the Khan himself. So the Khan on bike just feels really good really strong mm. you know um mm. and it'll be great to great to see what a model will look like so yeah i always flirt with the idea of doing some white scars but um whether i'll get around to it or not i don't know i just think you've got to have a lot of time and energy and patience to mask off all the teeth on the white yeah scars. The yeah thing. and white whites and people always say whites are hard color to paint i find white quite an easy color to paint the thing i find hard is then going in and doing all the bits all the after you've done yeah. the white. it's unforgiving it's yeah. i think it's easy to paint with an airbrush it's unforgiving uh when doing all the details because if you slip yeah. you're just like oh fuck. yeah so that's yeah stuff. yeah yeah you don't quite mask one of and, your little triangle yeah. bits off and right. it's like and it's red trim as well which is yeah. it's just a hassle it's not like yeah. simple metallic trim that you can just dry brush the the edges of yeah. this you know it's yeah. red trim that you got to think about highlighting and, and whatnot so yeah, it's a great legion, as you say. People who do it though absolutely love their legion. So yeah, it's it's, it's one of those people. legions, isn't it? It's it's it becomes a, a a passion piece for for a lot of people. Yeah. Um. It, it, yeah. Uh, most people I know who run white scars, they've 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 just always run white scars. That's that's their jam, and that's all they want to do. Um. Which I've got a lot of time for, to be honest. Um. Yeah, I, th- I think that's quite cool being that passionate about your legion that you just fucking love it. Um, I do need to go and read some of the White Scars books because it's just a legion that's never really, in terms of fluff, has never really interested me. Okay. Um, I think so I read White Scars s- books. Have you read Scars and Path of Heaven? I read Scars, but I couldn't even tell you what happens in it. It's so uh, long ago that I read yeah. it. Um, I need to give it a reread. And I remember reading it and thinking, meh, it was all right. Yeah. And everyone else seems to love it. Love it. Okay. So I yeah. feel like I need to reread it to do it some uh, some justice. Interesting. Because um, I think Path of Heaven is probably the most emotional of the uh, heresy books. Because I don't get emotional about them in the se- except for when I get excited about epic battle scenes but yeah. i think that's the more that was, that's the most gut-wrenching of right. the books that that they've done i'll have to um i'll have to give it a read um, cool, cool. But yeah cool hopefully uh you enjoyed this show uh let us know your thoughts on white scars uh how you run them how you would want to run them and i think you'd like to see uh that hasn't been released uh it, they seem to be short on on HQ, it'd be cool to see some more kind of special characters for them. Um, that's one thing I would say. Uh, but yeah, let us know your thoughts. Um, just quickly, uh, some more of our sponsors. So go check out Bits Monsters. Uh, free shipping within the UK over £25. And if you use the code Heresy Hammer, you get 10% off all Heresy items, uh, which means there's some really good deals on there. Uh, and we've got Curtain Games, uh, which um, 
I think it's local to John. Uh, so shout out to them for supporting the show. If you want to go and buy any mechanic and boxes when they finally release them, then go check out Curtain Games. Uh, and finally, shout out to our ever growing list of top tier um patrons and we haven't actually mentioned it all show i don't think but no. we do run a patreon show so we do two tacticas a month um discussing all sorts of things lately it's been uh how to run solo auxilia and how to kill solo auxilia so if you are interested in that go check out patreon heresy hammer um and we do all sorts of extra stuff up there you'll get first um First dibs at any event tickets we release. Uh, oh, there's a whole host of stuff on there. So go check out the Heresy Hammer Patreon. But we have three tiers, and these fine gentlemen here are our top tier Patreon members. So a huge shout out to these guys. Um, like we say, we say it all the time, like uh, we're blown away by the support we've received, but we always are. So thank you for your continued support. I'm not going to read all your names out because there are about 132 of you and well. you've seen how good I am at reading. <laughs> uh, so shout out to them. Uh, keep doing your hashtag Heresy Hammer. Um, we love looking through the pictures. Instagram has made it slightly hard lately. Like it, if I click on hashtag heresy hammer it just gives me all the top yeah it can't, liked. Do, it by, it can't be do it yeah. by dates anymore it's not yeah, done by date which is fucking annoying uh so if i haven't put any of your stuff up please just keep doing it 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 it's hard for me to see i have to literally scroll through like 10,000 pictures to see some of them so it's it's just i don't know why instagram's done it they did it a while ago it's fucking annoying um but if you haven't been doing hashtag heresy hammer, go check it out. There's like, I don't know, 10,000 odd pictures on there now. Um, please like, subscribe, comment, share. We've recently just hit 3,000 subscribers, but I was um, unable to sleep one night and I was looking through our analytics for YouTube and basically half the people who watch us aren't subscribed. So you fuckers could get us up to 6,000. <laughs> so please like, subscribe, uh, comment, share, all the good stuff. If you've got anything you want to message us about privately, then hash, uh, heresyhammer30k at gmail.com. Uh, and that's about it. Thank you very much. We'll see you at the next one. Peace out. Take care, guys. <laughs>